Carson Newman Eagles. A championship. It is the ultimate goal. The ultimate dream, the ultimate desire for any team in any sport at any level. Last year, the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats reached that pinnacle at the expense of Carson Newman College. Now, both teams are back. One trying to realize their dream, the other trying to repeat it. And back at Florence, Alabama, both Carson Newman and Northwest Missouri State to battle again for the Division II national title. Stadium to again challenge the defending Division II national champions, the Bearcats from Northwest Missouri State, who come in at 13 and 1. And we welcome you to Florence, Alabama. Dave Barnett along with Bill Curry. It is a rematch for the Division II championship, but these teams have gotten here traveling very different paths. First of all, Northwest Missouri State, they say, we try to be balanced. We don't really pay much attention to the numbers. Well, they somehow achieved almost perfect balance this year. Isn't that interesting? If luck is the residue of design, then I guess these guys are just plain lucky because they end up rushing for 210 yards a game, passing for 214. They define balance with their offense, and they do it from a variety of sets, formations, and systems. I think the most dangerous system they have, Dave, is to spread the field and throw the ball, and I think we're going to see that for the most part today. By contrast, Carson Newman makes no attempt at balance whatsoever. No, they're about as subtle as a ball-peen hammer. They're going to run the football 78.9% of the time if they stay true to form. They do it with line splits the size of Grand Canyon, and it may look strange, but they know what they're doing. It forces the defense to declare so they know where the defense is lining up. And how about this for results? On the season, 200 four first downs by running to 77 for the opponents, 339 yards rushing per game to 89 for the opponent, 6.3 yards per carry to 2.8. This state, David, hasn't seen numbers like that in the running game since the bear was running the bone down in Tuscaloosa. Well, working with us today on the sidelines, the guy who I think still remembers a thing or two about running the option, Don McPherson. Don? Thanks, Dave. You heard Coach Bill Curry talk about Carson Newman's dominance in the run game. What you're going to see is a lot of beer option football. Now there's two keys to beer option football. First of all, at least one defensive player will be left unblocked, which means that quarterback Leonard Dighton must reach, ride, and decide. Reach the ball back to his running back, ride him to the line of scrimmage, keeping his eye on his unblocked defensive read. Then make a decision to pull the ball or give it to his back. Now this must be done to precision, otherwise the ball will end up on the ground, something they can't afford in this championship game. And Unlike last year, when the Ken Sparks team lost 24 to 8, his team, really bothered by the weather conditions, which will not be a factor at all today. 20 years at Carson Newman, five NAIA championships, three runner-up finishes, two since their move to Division II, hoping to take that final step today to their first ever Division II national championship. And for Northwest Missouri State, in his sixth year, Mel Churchma 
15 and 0 a year ago. So count 99, and he's won 28 of his last 29 games. 57 and 9 with the Bearcats since debuting winless in 1994. This game a year ago played in a small monsoon field became a quagmire, and today this is the warmest temperature to start any game for the Division II title here in Florence. 61 degrees, a mild breeze. Absolute perfection. The conditions today. Carson Newman has won the toss they elect to receive, and Quez Rump, their school record kick returner, with better than 1,400 yards in his career, waiting for the kick from David Cornell. And taken at the 11 by Ronnie A. Main, swarmed immediately at the 17, and the flag comes down. Return of six yards. So the short return, and we'll wait for the indication from our officials from the Lone Star Conference today, headed by Bill Horn. So not much at all on the return, and Carson Newman will have to march further back. They go with this lineup in the backfield. Antoine Oliver, their main gun at 1,263 yards, better than eight yards per carry. Guyton, a much improved quarterback as a sophomore. Rump is favorite target, 36 catches, seven for touchdowns. He played in high school and now in college with Jarvani Jackson, both out of Fort Valley, Georgia. Top offensive lineman, senior from Maryville, Tennessee, Brett Mistak with Clevenger, Turner, Brown, and Lee clearing the way for 330 rush yards per game this year. They start from their eight-yard line. Both wideouts come right. The option goes left. And the pitch from Guyton to Oliver. Knocked out at the 13. The defense for Northwest Missouri State. Matt Vogey, the defensive line leader, senior from Galva, Iowa. Sidwell Shirts and Buck Walter, tremendous athlete. They call the freak. Brian Williams, a third more tackles than anybody else on the team. 153 for the year. Simmons banged up, but he starts with Bonnet on the other side. And Marcel Smith starts for the injured Frank Taylor. Missed some practice time this week with a leg injury, but will try to go at some point today. And on the right side of the offensive line, Henry Lee and Nick Brown both fired out before the count. Left side. False start on the offense. Five yards, still second down. Dave, one of the goals that Carson Newman has for their offensive unit is no drive-killing penalties. That's the very kind of thing. Had a nice play on the first play. The option for five yards. They were coming up there second and five. Now they're suddenly at second and ten. That's a lot to make for a running team. Leonard Guyton, who has been a winner everywhere. 45-2 and two since high school. This one is on target for Grant Cockrell at the 25-yard line. A pickup of 17 and a first down for Carson Newman. Cockrell, their third leading receiver, that's just his 13th catch. He averages 21 yards per catch. Two things that are stand out on this first play. Good protection, and that's hard to do with play action off the option, and accuracy from Guyton. Not his strongest point, but a fine throw to get the first down, the initial first. Through the middle this time, near the 30-yard line goes Myron Refor, junior fullback out of Wachula, Florida. Very important here. The way Northwest Missouri State adjusts to the huge splits of Carson Newman. A year ago, they were able to successfully defend this powerful ground game by hitting the gaps and stunting and stimming with their defensive linemen and linebackers. Both teams, though, because of the horrible conditions last year, really felt like they never got a true chance to play their game. Even uh, winning it, Northwest Missouri State pretty much felt the same way. Sidwell on this tackle. On short yardage and at the 31 yard line now, the Eagles looking at a third and four. So if they play their game, Bill, their style, they're gonna have long drives dominated by the, the runs up the middle. Northwest Missouri State 
gearing the defense to stop that first, because they say if you don't stop that, that's all you'll see all day. This time they get Guyton on the option and ridden down by Joe Quinlan. Wes Simmons banged up, bothered by a shoulder. He started Quinlan in for Simmons and makes the third down tackle. And here's the Bearcats' answer to the wide splits. They're jumping into the gaps. They're penetrating, taking up the blockers. Defended the pitch man well, and Guyton had no place to go and was tackled for no gain. First punt of the game. Brett Cobb averages 36 yards into what win we have. And Tony Miles not able to manage much at all on the return of a 39-yard punt. Ike Curry made the tackle. And Northwest Missouri State on offense for the first time. David Jansen, their leading rusher with 1,562 yards, but their second leading receiver, 37 catches, four for touchdowns. Miles, the quarterback, Woolsey, a bruising fullback. Tony Miles, not only a great kick returner, their leading receiver by a mile, 63 catches on the year. Hill on the other side, Comer is the tight end. Top offensive lineman maybe in the country in Division II is Chad Topser. And from a one-back set, Miles to Miles, Travis to Tony, and driven out of bounds after a pickup of seven at the 40-yard line. The Carson Newman defense allows about 300 yards per game. Cedric Killings may be the best defensive lineman in Division II, a senior from Miami, joined by Hippolyte and Griffin. Their linebackers are led by Ike Curry, 13 tackles for loss, six sacks originally signed with Tennessee, a junior here at Carson Newman. In the secondary, Montre Ford, their leading tackler on the year and a preseason All-America. Miles good for eight yards on first down. Now the toss sweep for David Jansen. Crowded on that right side and never got the corner turn and will come up still short of the first down, hit there by William Hippolyte. Early in the game, Mel Churchmill wants to take his offensive unit and establish one thing with Carson Newman. We're going to hit you. We're going to be as physical as you are. Carson Newman takes extreme pride in their physicality. Northwest Missouri State wants to come out and match it in the early going. Third short here. Miles up the middle and a huge hole. Easy first down pickup, Tucker Woolsey. Straight into the secondary where Marcus Early, the strong safety, finally corrals him near midfield. Physicality for the first time established right here by the big fullback, Woolsey. Nice blocking up front. Andy Earp Helding, number 58, the left tackle. And there's your physicalness. Both teams intend to do that all day long. Travis Miles out of the shotgun this time. Chased and just does get it off in time. Almost caught and almost intercepted. It went through Jansen's hand and then through Early's hand. He did well to get it off at all. Whoa, baby. Jansen and Early kicking themselves right here. Nice movement in the pocket, and you'll see Miles do that frequently. Jansen could have made the catch early, should have made the catch. A little tightness here in the early going in the national championship game by both teams. Up the middle, and again, a huge hole awaits Woolsey. Who's down to the 36, a pickup of 15. Dave, I was very blunt in our open here. I expect to see Northwest Missouri State spread this field and use a variety of formations and throw the ball all over the lot. But first, they're going to come out and establish that they're going to be physical. And if Carson Newman can't stop the fullback, they may not ever get around to throwing it. Big Woolsey's a tough guy, and he gets excited when he gets to carry the ball. It's a rarity. He's had it twice, and he has totaled 22 yards. And picked up first down each time. Rolling and overthrowing Tony Miles this time, Travis Miles. Travis Miles, for two years, a backup to Chris Grison, who uh, went from this game all the way to uh, the Arizona Cardinals as a draft pick a year ago. But in 
undefeated and ranked number one. Nationally, Division II coming into this one. They've had it and have forced the punt on their first possession. And now the defending champion Bearcats on the march. The first time they have it. They're at the 26-yard line. And Travis Miles will go to the air. Off play action. And incomplete. Ball is caught but out of bounds was Seneca Holmes. Northwest Missouri State with Mel Churchma in charge for his sixth year, 15-0 in the national championship season last year, and they're 13-1, the preseason number one pick to repeat this year. Ten years at Austin College, moved up, took over a uh, fairly downtrodden program, and really built them up, and Ken Sparks in 20 years at Carson Newman in Jefferson City, Tennessee, five NAIA championships, looking for his first at this level. Ball is caught by the tight end, Steve Comer. Steve Comer, the starting tight end, replaces Moss, number 82, who stood out in this game a year ago in Comer's absence. Comer was injured last year. Moss made all-conference last year, Dave. Comer comes back. He makes all-conference this year and just showed us why. Catching the ball in traffic over the middle. Nice throw by Miles and a good start for the Northwest Missouri State offense. Third and short toss, David Jansen. All the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Northwest Missouri State, 18 yards. The key to the game for Carson Newman's defense is the capacity to adjust to the variety of offensive looks that they're getting from Northwest Missouri State. This time, in one of the most important mistakes that can be made on defense, there was no contain. Get up, get up. David Purnell, a perfect 66 of 66 on the year, and the Bearcats, the first time they get it, March for a score, Jansen untouched for 18 yards, and the defending champs on top early in Florence. Monday night countdown at 7 on E. 7 and nothing, Northwest Missouri State takes it 67 yards on 10 plays, and David Jansen capped it off untouched. 18 yards. When they had it on third down, they get big gainers, a couple of them by Woolsey and the one that... Uh, Wrapped up that drive by Jansen. Yeah, they're just whipping them physically, and I, I think that's a surprise, maybe to both sides, certainly to Carson Newman. So, Quez Rump, the all-time leading kick returner in the Eagles history, hoping to get a shot. He didn't on the first Purnell kickoff, and he won't hear either. They're keeping it away, and Ronnie A. Main takes this one back. He missed it for 23 yards. On the touchdown, we talked about physical football, but we also talked about the capacity to adjust. Now, they're going to, Carson Newman's going to stunt in here, and Matt Burris is going to try to come to the outside to pick this up. He has contained, number 25. He's going to be blocked by Comer, number 89. Here goes Jansen for the end zone. Big guy out front. Nice job by Tony Miles blocking at the goal line for the touchdown. Good execution. First time they had it, Eagles ran off six plays, and then they were forced to kick it. Frustrated because he thought there was more room there. Myron Rayford, junior fullback, their third leading rusher. I'll tell you how much room there was. David, there was about um, 65 yards of room, and he knew it. Had he kept his feet, you would have seen why they averaged 6.3 yards per carry because he was gone. And that's all it takes in this rear offense for those quick handoffs. They were lined up so close to the line of scrimmage with the pitch split. Well, out of all that open room, Reefort limited to only five. This toss complete to Javani Jackson, their second leading target. And a high school and collegiate teammate of the other wide receiver, Rumpf. Guyton, with a terrific history as the starting quarterback, both at uh, Thomasville, Georgia, in high school, and Carson Newman. Add that up, that's 45-2. and two. He took over this team for the injured Zach Allen last year, but... 
Scott Boswick, the defensive coordinator for the Bearcats, says watching him play this year, you can really tell that it is his football team. He's in charge, and he's taken them to a 13-0 start. 3-4 for maybe three yards up the middle this time. And we have our answer about Northwest Missouri State's methods with the line splits. You're going to see them, Williams, smashing through the gaps here. A year ago, this was successful as they shut Carson Newman down with only 91 yards rushing. That's almost impossible to do. You see Williams is in the backfield penetrating, and that's what an option offense cannot afford. Really emphasizing the fullback here earlier. Leading rusher Oliver's had it only once. Guyton keeps it on the option. Big room. And then the late pitch for Oliver is cut down in the open field before he can turn it up for the last 40 yards. David Carlson, the strong safety, preventing the touchdown. Option football forces responsibility on defense. Everybody has to play his responsibility. And it's so important that the fake be good. It's perfect here by Guyton. He pulls the ball, accelerates in a 45-degree angle. The pitch back keeps perfect relationship. The pitch goes to Oliver, and he's almost down the sidelines for the touchdown, but it's discipline on offense, forcing discipline on defense. That reminded me of Don McPherson. He looked like a young McPherson, didn't he? Wasn't as sweet as foot, but he looked just like him. Number 32. <laughs> What was that you said? Not as fleet as foot. Not as fleet as foot. <laughs> <laughs> I was much younger in those days as well. How fleet was your foot? <laughs> I saw you play. You were right. You could smoke. I hadn't seen you run lately, big man. Well, I tell you what, I'm standing down here on the Northwest Missouri bench and listening to the defensive coaches. They're telling them not only to push in those gaps, but also to reach for the ball. And that's what happens when you get too aggressive on option football. You give up that corner. And that's from a man who understands option football. Yeah, it about as well as anybody was while he was at Syracuse. Got into the air, the ball was tipped and incomplete. Brian Williams, by far the Bearcats' leading tackler, dropping back in pass coverage to break that one up, bring up third and eight. Scott Boswick says that Williams is a guy that wills the rest of the defense to play at his level. And both these teams convert an incredible percentage on third down, 48% in a run-oriented offense. Really stands out for Carson. Eight. But they're usually not third and eight. This will be interesting. Rough in motion, got in the straight drop, effective in the pocket, and gets it over the middle to Jackson, who will have the first down inside the 25. Coach Sparks of Carson Newman really makes a big point of starting well. Defensively, they got knocked around and they got a little confused in the first drive. The offense didn't start well, but now they've come out and Guyton with his accuracy, which has not been his strongest suit, he's been near perfect throwing the football. That's how you keep drives going on third and long. Three out of four, 37 yards. This one overthrown, and Jarvati Jackson gets popped, even without the ball. Number 57, Matt Bogey, getting in the backfield. Here again, the strategy is to penetrate those gaps. Don't always widen with those Grand Canyon-type gaps so that you're getting in the quarterback's face. And in that case, they were around his feet, forced him to throw off the back foot and elevated the pass so that it wasn't as good as his previous pass. So on second and 10, they go to three wide. But run the option, and Guyton throws a couple of defenders just long enough to pick up about four yards. Matt Vogie, the leader of the Bearcat defensive line, made the first contact at the 21. Now we talked about Northwest Missouri State's defense being poor against the option when they gained 20 or 30 yards a moment ago. This is perfect execution by the defense. Williams is there for the pick, overruns it a little bit, forces Guyton back into the pursuit. Passing down again, third and six. Too tall for Quez Rump. And he was gonna get blasted 
even had he caught the ball, David Carlson was right there. I don't think either way he gets the first down. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, Carlson shows up in the action. He loves the noise. He likes to create noise upside people's heads. Carlson's a tough guy, and he is going to strike you every chance he gets. A good, clean, tough football player. Now, the kicking game is not Carson Newman's strong suit. Ryan Fleming is only 3 of 8 for the year with a long of 34 yards. He's going to try from 38 yards out here. And at this moment, no wind really at all. He has just enough leg on this one. Ryan Fleming with his best kick of the year gets Carson Newman on the board and within four. This exclusive presentation of the NCAA Division II Championship is brought to you by Dremel, tools for the imagination, and by TGI Fridays, home of the Jack Daniels Grill. Eagles break through on the, their second possession. They get the 38-yard field goal by Ryan Fleming, capping an 11-play drive. Now he hangs this uh, high short kick, which is fair caught at the 30 by Northwest Missouri State, and then flags down after Mark Moss made the catch. Yeah, that's Michael Neal, number 56, and I don't think he saw the fair catch signal. He went ahead to tackle the guy, and I, it looked like as he made the tackle, he realized, uh-oh, this guy's standing still, and something must be wrong here. Again, there's the, there's the official signal, personal foul. I don't think he intended to do it. If he wanted to hurt him, he would have certainly jacked him up a lot more than he did. You get real excited when you play for championships, David. Yeah. Sometimes to your detriment, it hurts the Eagles here as Northwest Missouri State starts this drive from their 46-yard line. And they moved in at will on their opening possession. Not on first down here, though. David Jansen piled up at the line of scrimmage. Northwest Missouri State from Maryville, Missouri, by far the bigger enrollment of 6,200. Founded 1905. They can get back, as we said, uh, for, they hope, a repeat Division II championship. Only 29 returnees, though, off last year's roster, so it is not entirely the same faces getting it done this year. Reverse fake to Tony Miles, and again, not much room on tackle for Jansen, who struggles to midfield where he's hit by William Hippolyte. Now, Carson Newman out of Jefferson City, Tennessee, just 2,200 their enrollment. And uh, Carl Torbush of North Carolina, one of their uh, most prominent alums. They've really had a, a long history of excellence in football. A lot of good coaches, a lot of good players have come out of Carson Newman. 2,200 students, they are the smallest school to play for the Division II championship. One of my favorite people, Joe Scroggs, was a running back for Carson Newman about 100 years ago. Third and seven, and Miles slipped on his cut. Michael Breadwood had him pretty well covered anyway. Now here's a marvelous athlete, Tony Miles, one of the better athletes in this game, who gets himself in good position, but the reason he falls is because he does not have the weight over the balls of his feet. This is an excellent feel, and it's in good condition. But when you get your feet out from under your body, those cleats don't get purchased, and you just might fall down. It cost him a catch there. There's Rump hoping to uh, get this one returned from his 10-yard line. Jeff LeBlanc, senior out of Houston. There he goes, Rump. One man with a chance, maybe. Quez Ruff brings this one back. 86 yards for a Carson Newman touchdown. The most 
exciting play in football is the great punt return in unlikely, unlikely circumstances, meaning from deep behind the 10-yard line, and Quez Rump shows how it's done. Watch this last move, beautiful, picking those feet up, avoiding the last tackler, taking in the end zone. Grant Sutton making that uh, unsuccessful dive inside the five-yard line, and the extra point by Ryan Fleming is good, and Quez Rump, better known as a kickoff returner, but every bit as dangerous on punt returns as well. That is the longest punt return in NCAA championship game history, 86 for six. What kind of a man is Hugh Hefner? Unbelievable. I've never dated anyone. Dominated by big plays, Carson Newman gets the big punt return of 86 yards by Rump to take their first lead. And Ryan Fleming trying to keep it away from the dangerous Tony Miles and does so. This one is returned from the 18-yard line by Seneca Holmes. Many, many people believe this is the most important play in football. Northwest Missouri State has had great difficulty covering kicks in their last two or three games. The only thing I would say to young Quez and his coaches will pull him to the side and say, put that ball away. I know Gail Sayers did it and Walter Payton did it, but you are not Gail nor Walter yet. This guy's from Fort Valley State, Fort Valley, Georgia, that is, in the state of Georgia. South Georgia, where football is every bit as much a religion as it is here in Alabama. And that's urgency that you saw going down that sideline. That's the only way he evaded that last tackler because the piano starts to fall on the back, David, about that time. Yeah, he, he kind of looked like Gail Sayers. I don't know. <laughs> well, Gail carried it like that, but I'm not sure that I would want to teach my guys to do that. That thing can fall out of your hand. Carson Newman offsides on that kickoff, so they're going to have to do it all over again. Now, Tony Miles... More dangerous as a punt returner. He is uh, sort of the reverse of Rump. All right, as a kick returner, 23 yards per return, but second in the country bringing punts back an average of 21 yards. He is a marvelous punt returner. You're exactly right. Brett Kopp, the punter, handling the kickoff duties. And once again, it is Holmes from the 23. Well covered. Once more by the Eagles, brings it back only five. Tonight at 8 Eastern, ESPN again proud to bring you the Heisman Trophy presentation for the sixth consecutive year. Liz Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, and John Makovic will be at the Downtown Athletic Club in New York. Will Ron Dane win as expected, or will we see an upset pulled by Joe Hamilton, Chad Pennington, Drew Brees, or Michael Vick? 25th anniversary, by the way of Archie Griffin's back-to-back -back Heismans, and we'll have a special conversation with him. Lots to look forward to from the Downtown Athletic Club tonight. So the Bearcats coming from behind, and they start with Travis Miles, throwing a strike for about five yards to Tony Miles, brought down by Marcus Early. Now here we are, we're still in the first quarter. Northwestern Missouri State is now in their seventh offensive set. Now, they say they only have six basic ones, but Carson Newman has counted 58 different sets. They lined up again against them last year, and they're going to start doing it here. The tight end moving, trying to confuse the defensive force and kill. Almost a perfectly balanced attack this year. Jansen tripped up Number behind the line Jansen. of scrimmage. No game. You're right, David, but of course, you're almost always right. 210 yards a game rushing, 214 yards a game passing, and coaches dream about having balance, but very seldom do you see something that's that close to perfection. And Mel Churchman says, we really don't pay attention to the numbers. It just happened to work out that way. Didn't work out much better. I tell you, they need a first down right here. The momentum has really swung toward Carson Newman. And Travis Miles will use their first time out. 2 one in the first quarter, 10-7. Carson Newman. 
The Paul School has a pretty large contingent of fans here, and they're happy with a three-point lead late in the first quarter. Third and six, Travis Miles chased, gets it off, and it is again almost intercepted. Intended for Woolsey and through the hands of the middle linebacker, Matthew Burris. Matthew Burris, who was hooked on the touchdown run when he had to come from inside out on contain in blitz coverage here, in man-to-man -man coverage, because they are coming, almost makes a beautiful interception, but does break it up and force the punt. This is a different Carson Newman defense than a year ago against this Northwest Missouri State team. LeBlanc's last effort brought back 86 yards by Rump, and he backed him up all the way to the 17 this time. And he will go no further. Seth Wan making sure of that. That's something you don't see very often. A offensive lineman, big Seth Wan, 6'7", 270, good speed and a nice tackle on the elusive runner. Seth said, he's not going to do that to us again. The officials are conferring about something here. Yeah, but he got a hold of a face mask. Wipe out maybe a 51 okay. yard punt. On the return, face pass, five yards on the kicking team. Five yards, first and ten. Let's go down to Don McPherson. Well, Dave, the option attack for Carson Newman has been about to what's, ex what's expected from a veer option attack. There's been a couple of very big plays, but most of all, it's given them consistency to hold on to the football. Started as if to run the option, and now throws it deep into double coverage and incomplete. And lucky, perhaps, that one wasn't picked off. Intended for Lydell Blue, the backup fullback. You know, really good play by redshirt freshman Tony Warren, number 25, coming off the hash at safety. That was a throwback, meaning the play began in one direction, the receiver ran in the other. And many times that confuses secondaries. But Tony Warren was ready for the play and almost plucked it with a one-hand catch on the sideline. Three out of seven in the first quarter. That uh, is a barrage by Carson Newman's standards. They run it about three times as much as they throw it. Here's why. Plays like this by Antoine Oliver. 1,200-plus rushing yards coming in, and this one goes 45 right up the gut. Antoine plays with great emotion and with great effort. He's going to explode through the line of scrimmage from his split-back position here. He's hit at the line of scrimmage by Matt Bogey, a big defensive lineman, just shrugs him off and then turns it up the field, runs away from everybody except the corner one who cracks him down after a lengthy game. That's where the beer eats you up alive. 225 pounder, only 5'9", surprising speed as the Bearcats were just reminded. Marker down. Ryan Miller, big hit. And the indication against Carson Newman. Once again, one of the goals for the Carson Newman offense is no penalties that stop drives. Somebody holding on that one? You don't want to come up first and 20. So Ryan, uh, Myron would re four. Good for no gain, and now they back up after the holding call to the 41. Final minute of the first quarter, it's first and 19. Oliver. This time cannot escape the clutches of Matt Vogie, the senior defensive tackle from Galva, Iowa. Carson Newman has very specific goals. Of course, they grade each player. 
one fumble or fewer. That's critical in this offense. One interception or less. No penalties to stop drives. We mentioned that. The orange zone, most people call it the red zone. They call it orange for obvious reasons if you have a color TV set. So those specific goals must be met in order to sustain drives. They just got hit in the backfield by Bogey, and this time he made it stick. Last play of the quarter, and Guyton just does get that one off, and uncharacteristically rough, drops it. He could have taken that one a long way. But so the end of the first quarter, 10-7 for Carson Newman looking for their first Division II title. Football fashion innovation on display at Raleigh Municipal Stadium, Florence, Alabama, second quarter of the Division II championship. And Carson Newman starts it looking at a third and 18. Guyton with time to go deep. And in the back of the end zone, caught but out of the end zone, Grant Cockrell. Throwing the deep ball has not been the strong suit of Guyton, but this is a beautiful throw, and I'm not so sure that foot didn't touch down. The official was right on it, made the call, so the foot out of bounds must have touched the ground first. David Carlson was there in coverage, but that was a beautiful throw. Guyton's made a number of excellent throws here today. And I think they got that one right. I think the, the lead foot touched out of bounds, and then the, uh, the trailing foot was inbounds, but by that time, the play is over. But very high and fair caught at the 16 by Miles. 25-yarder by Rhett Kopp. Well, the list is getting smaller, and the names are getting bigger. ESPN Sports Century continues its countdown of the top athletes of the century. Friday night at 10 Eastern, it's number six, the legendary Jesse Owens, who defied Hitler and collected a slew of gold at the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. And at 10.30, the great one, Wayne Gretzky, owner of nearly every significant hockey record. We are getting down to uh, the biggest of the big. Jesse Owens and Wayne Gretzky next on the Sports Century Countdown. Bearcats from the 16 and overthrown. Intended that time for Ryan George, junior wideout from Gladstone, Missouri. Travis Miles struggling the early going. Three of nine through the air for only 21 yards. Average 202 yards per game. Got better every week. Assuming the starting role from uh, Arizona Cardinals, Chris Bryson. Took him to the championship a year ago. Miles, a junior from Rolla, Missouri. Mostly wild high here in the first half. Jansen on the toss. And run down from behind. Pick up of maybe two yards. Keith Ackard. And no matter how many formations you have, your quarterback must throw with accuracy. And that has been a problem so far for Miles. We've got the I, the ace, which is one back with two tight ends, split backs, four wide receivers, five, and even six. From those basic formations, they have a variety of movement, shifting of strengths, and they'll do it several times in an attempt to confuse Carson Newman. So far today, the only time Carson Newman seems to have been confused is on the touchdown run. Three wides in the shotgun on third down for Miles. Scrambles has no time to look up field and is right at the first down marker. I don't know if they'll give it to him or not. He may be a footer so short. Steve Josu who had the angle on Travis Miles. It's going to be real close. Yep, and when you're the quarterback running for the sideline, it's a bad feeling when the defensive lineman can outrun you and catch you from behind. No disgrace for Miles because Steve Josu can fly. He has the most sacks. He has the most lost yardage plays for this Carson Newman team. And not even a starter. Well, they get him in pretty yeah. fast, David. <laughs> yes, he makes the most of the time he is in. So LeBlanc now kicking into what win we have, about 12, 13 miles per hour. 86-yarder in the first quarter. NCAA championship game record for Rump. Good if they're caught this one maybe at the 40. 
hit immediately by Nick Dowell. Yeah, and that was a tough catch because his own man, Butler, was in his way. Chris Butler was trying to block for him. There's a flag on the field that are going to probably call interference against the coverage team. But Butler, his own man, actually was more of a menace here. And had Butler bumped him or caused him to fumble, there's Butler 21, then there would have been no call to protect him. Kick catch interference against the kicking team. Five yards, first down. Yeah, they did call it on Northwest Missouri State, breaking the two-yard barrier. They'll start from the 45-10 to 7 lead for the Eagles. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Division II Championship is brought to you by Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Carson Newman leading 10 to 7 and they take over on their own 45 yard line early in the second quarter dave barnett bill curry and don mcpherson in florence alabama carson newman with a rather sizable edge in total yardage after touchdown from the special teams though. and a season-long 38 yard field goal by ryan Fleming. guyton on first down, quarterback sneak. First down sneak, and he saw how wide that hole was. Most coaching staffs give their quarterback the freedom to hit that gap if he sees it. He might even not make a call. He may just goose the center, and it's called a goose play for obvious reasons. Funny feeling for the center, but you know to hike the ball and get out of the way. <laughs> to, to get goosed is a yes, little bit of a fight. Yes, <laughs> Well, Guyton following uh, his center, Dan Turner, for five yards. And Turner's a fine center, all, all conference players. And again, room through the middle for the first down. Melvin Oates, their second leading rusher, who had 940 yards as a junior, giving way to Oliver this year. That this is a tough kind of play, hitting this thing back through here behind trap blocking, pulling and kicking out here. Very difficult for the defense to figure. The linebacker's got to fill very quickly. He's a little bit slow, and it forces a secondary-type tackle, and there's a good gain on the play. Really looking at four running threats out there for Carson Newman. Guyton, both tailbacks, Oliver and Oates, and Refor, the fullback, late. Dangerous pitch is handled by Oates, and Ryan Miller then handles Melvin Oates. 27, Miller again with the tackle. Yeah, you, you're right when you say dangerous, Dave, but quarterbacks have to make dangerous pitches in this offense, and in this case, this is perfect defense. There's a man for the dive, there's a man for the quarterback, there's a man for the pitch. Those are the kinds of things that used to frustrate Don McPherson with all his talent and speed, the great Syracuse quarterback that's on our sideline today. I never saw him show any frustration. You, you're thinking of somebody else. Second and nine. Rump looks for flag and one will come. They will call the pass interference. Wes Simmons just a hair early. Really close call on West. West hasn't been playing the last couple of weeks because of a bad shoulder. And sometimes little bitty timing things are the things that hurt you in football. If you've been playing and practicing every day, then maybe you make that hit at exactly the right time. But he's just a little early. So that moves it now inside the 40 of the Bearcats. Call for uh, their third penalty. First and 10 from the 39 of the Bearcats. So a nice march working here for the Eagles, who started off only 55 yards away from the goal line anyway. First man through, and this is Refor, close for another first down, inside the 30, and let's set it down to Don McPherson. Thanks, Dave. If you notice on the back of the Northwest Missouri helmets is the number 57. This is in honor of one of their teammates, Phil Vogie, who was killed in a car accident earlier this year. If you'll also notice, Matt Vogie, defensive tackle for Northwest Missouri, is wearing his brother's jersey. Now, last year, Phil Simmons, excuse me, Wes Simmons, the linebacker for Northwest Missouri, lost his brother in a car accident. You get the feeling when you talk to these players that these tragedies have brought this team very, very close. 
Mark Hirsch was saying the Simmons uh, tragedy last year and his experience in dealing with it really helped Matt Vogie and the rest of the team dealing with uh, Phil Vogie's untimely death earlier. And Wes, as a junior, major cog in this Northwest Missouri State defense. Football is the ultimate team sport. It's the only sport I'm aware of in which every player needs every player on every play. And when you endure real tragedy like that in real life, it either destroys you or it pulls you together. Both these teams have responded extremely well. That's obvious. From the 28 now, first and 10. And again, there's room up the middle and backing his way to the 15 was Oates. Give him 12 yards, riding him the whole way, Brian Williams. This is the trap again, and again, this is very difficult. The linebacker's got to feel very quickly. If he's not up in there in a hurry, then this is what happens. The back pops it through. This time it's Oates, who's a good second effort runner. And Carson Newman has got this game. He's kind of got the feel of exactly what they want. Grind it out, pound it, use those big splits. Crap the with uh, stunting defense for Northwest Missouri. Ball uh, by Guyton through the hands of Rump may have been deflected at the line. Rump appeared to be open, though, at the goal line. The ball was deflected at the line. Otherwise, Rump's in good shape here. And one of the problems for the defense in option football is that everybody's got responsibilities in the running game. And so you kind of forget about a quick break on the football. Had that ball not been tipped, it might have been a touch. Ninth play of this drive. With three wide out, second and ten. Guyton, the way the drive started, thought he had a little more room perhaps up the middle. Gets only two. Brian Schertz, the nose guard, wrapped him up. And now... Uh, Maybe the biggest play of this first half, third and eight. We said early, early in this game that it's very important how these defenses that play against Carson Newman attack the gaps. Well, we now know how they're attacking the gaps, and we know what Carson Newman's answer is. It's to run that crap and to continue to pound the option. You're right, third and eight, big play. Keep it on the ground, though, and Reefor will have first and goal. They'll give him the four-yard line. Third and eight, and this team runs it, and they run it, powering it right up the middle. Yeah, and you want to know how people like Scott Bostwick, the defensive coordinator for Northwest Missouri State, gets headaches and gray hair. Here's a third and eight call. Now, look at that. That's just a little dive to the to the halfback shouldn't be a problem right wrong it's always a problem with an offense that has enough confidence in their old line and their backs to hand it off on third and eight so two tight ends on first and goal at the four and the pile moves all the way to the one with uh, Oates tackled by Cole Sidwell there nice job by the front guys for Carson Newman, Brandon Fletcher, the tight end, Britt, Brett Mistak, Blake Clevenger, the left side of the offensive line, they feel is their better side. They just ran the inside belly, the linemen taking on people, blocking down with the lead back offense. And you're liable to see the same play again and again until they get it in the end zone or get stopped. In the quagmire last year, they couldn't run it as well as they already have this year. Guyton hit as he hands off for the touchdown. Hard to read Guyton sometimes. Oates had it. Guyton got hit harder. Touchdown, Carson Newman. And that's the lot of a quarterback. And we teased Don McPherson about option quarterback play, but he's got to be ready to take the hit, let go of the football in the belly of the ball carrier who takes it in the end zone at the appropriate time. It requires terrific hand-eye coordination and judgment. Ryan Fleming for the extra point. 17-7. 
Jason Newman taking command here in the second quarter of the Division II title game. Carson Newman lost this game a year ago, 24-6. They take control, 17-7 on the one-yard touchdown by Melvin Oates with 8.27 to go. That capped a 12-play drive, only one pass. They grounded out in the true Carson Newman offensive style that time. Red Cops kick out of bounds. And Bill Horn of this entire officiating crew out of the Lone Star Conference. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. And if you're Carson Newman, you really hate to see that happen. You don't want to give the ball to the opposition on the 35-yard line because of a poor kickoff. There's really no excuse for that. At least you can kick the ball inbounds and give your coverage unit a chance to get down there and keep them inside that 20. Field position, I think, is the second most important aspect in the ability to score. Number one being ball security. But where you start has a huge statistical impact on where you end up. Well, the Eagle defense fired up, ready to go after Travis Miles, who has struggled through the air so far. Well protected, and throws a strike at midfield. In the middle of the coverage was J.R. Hill, junior from Richardson, Texas. Now, this is what I thought we would see earlier, Dave. I think Northwest Missouri State came out, wanted to be physical, and found out they're going to out physical if they keep doing that. They're going to spread the field and throw this football. I would do this over and over and over against this Carson Newman secondary. That is by far the best pass Travis Miles has thrown so far today. This is high and brought in, but for a loss of five yards by Jansen. Again tonight at 8 Eastern, ESPN brings you for the sixth consecutive year the Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Kerb Street, and John Makovic will all be at the Downtown Athletic Club to see whether Ron Dane, who broke Ricky Williams' record this year, gets the Heisman or if there is perhaps a surprise. And uh, we would both be very surprised if it's not Ron Dane's award this year. We would. We've seen him literally grow up and become a man. I thought he was a, a little bit lethargic when I saw him two years ago, but he is certainly not that anymore. On second and long, Miles gets it off and almost caught on the run by Steve Comer. The tight end as Jason Slimp came on a safety blitz and pressured Travis Miles into the incompletion. One year ago, the Carson Newman defense had an incredibly difficult time just getting lined up against the variety of systems thrown at them by the Bearcats. This year, totally different deal. This well-coached team knows who has whom, and they're covering well. They're getting pressure on the quarterback. If they can continue this, it sure bodes well for the Carson 15. Newman team. My good friend Glenn Spencer, my former player, great football coach down at West Georgia Division II school, said he would be very surprised if Carson Newman could win this football game. I wondered if we were going to get the whistles. That ball... Uh, Obviously snapped late. Either that or Monty Williams, number 78, was early. One of the two. Monty Williams moved early about three times in the game against Northern Colorado during the Before playoff. The snap, delay a game in the offense. Five yards, still first down. Well, they have uh, chased Travis Miles around a little bit. They haven't gotten to him yet. Carson Newman racked up 42 sacks for the year coming into this game. They gave up only 12, so that, that's a big part of their 13-0 record. Third and 20 for Miles. And lets this one go deep and intercepted by Montre Ford. His fourth pick of the year, and he brings it back for good return yardage to the 33. Both these teams have been burned badly by deep balls all year long. On this occasion, a poor decision 
by Miles to let this ball go. And Montre Ford, the fine free safety, number four, is in excellent position to come across and pluck it. He was playing like a robber position here, and he came out of nowhere, at least in Miles' view, or lack of view, I should say. Good effort and a good rundown for the tackle by Wolsey, the fullback, number 45, for the Bearcat. Matt Vogie reached across the line and tagged Dan Turner as if to uh, emphasize that he had been drawn offside. Let's see whether he was or not. Offside on the defense. Nope. Five yards. Still first down. Guyton is showing us again and again why he has such a phenomenal record. What'd you say, Dave? 45 and 2? 46 and 2. 46 and 2. That's pretty good. He manipulates the snap count legally to cause the defense to jump. Here comes that dive again. Look at him. Well, this is uh, really three drives in a row. That play has almost been unstoppable. Oates, who got the touchdown on the last drive, moved the pile about seven or eight yards after his uh, first contact happened, and it's first down up to the 46. Well, if you're grading on the physical scale, the physicality scale goes about 10 on a scale of 10 for Carson Newman and about a 6 for the Bearcats so far today. And last year, that number would have been reversed. Nobody with the orange pants and white shirts today is the least bit intimidated. That and showed option. Now airing this one out for Jarvani Jackson, who draws interference. Jackson briefly forced out of bounds and then ran back inbounds. I don't know if they'll call that or contact by Tony Warren as the ball arrived. He was definitely running out of bounds for uh, a good stretch before he saw where the ball was coming down. There is no foul. The receiver stepped out of bounds prior to the catch. Okay, here's the rule on that, Dave. If you run out of bounds on your own power, then you're not allowed to come back in and catch the ball. If you're forced out and get back in as quickly as possible, then you are allowed to attempt to catch the ball. That was the judgment of the official, and there was no interference in the judgment of the official. It was a marvelous throw as Guy has been doing most of the day. Rump went in motion. Oates calls for what's going to be close to another first down inside the 44. Yeah, one thing that's becoming more and more evident is this uh, O-line's just knocking them back. Carson Newman, no stranger to Brawley Municipal Stadium. 0-5 here, including the 96 and 98 championships. They have ended six of their last seven seasons on this field. But they appear to have uh, overcome whatever jinx. And uh, very questionable whether they even thought they had a jinx working here. They've controlled this first half. Guyton... On, the on third and one, easily picking up the first. Ken Sparks, when I asked him about that, you'll remember this, day. We had a nice long visit with him the other night. I said, what about this thing of losing at Raleigh Stadium? He said, that's chasing ghosts. We don't do that. And you got the feeling he meant that, and you got the feeling that his team incorporates his view of things. In fact, he has some strong views about a lot of things. He says the national championship's not our goal. Yeah. That's just a that's just a stopping off place. We, we shoot much higher than that. We want to be men of excellence. So if, if we do our jobs right, then the championship will be a byproduct, but that's not necessarily the goal we start the year with. You really see in the power running now. Oliver and Oates both go 225, and uh, they are slowly wearing down the Bearcat D. The juggle is really hard to coach, David, that little juggle there. I'm not sure the coaches will like that, but they will certainly like the run and the result as he pounds Tony Warren and Ryan Miller, 25 and 27 respectively. Carson Newman, 
I can't say it any other way. They are just taking it to the folks in green. Again, Oliver. And again, well into the secondary before anybody brings him down to the 24 pickup of 12 yards. Yeah, you got to take your head off to Nick Brown, 65, and Henry Lee, 77, the right side of the O-line, just flat knocking people back. Good work up there against the front people and, and the good front people. Brian Schertz, Brian Williams, the tackle in the inside linebacker, just got knocked out of the play. March continues. Another first down give to Oliver, tries to cut it back and picks up about four. Hit by Cole Sidwell. When you got a coach like Ken Sparks, who is such a man of principle and faith, and he tells you things like this, you get the feeling he means it and that he's sincere. See, the guys can spot a phony in a heartbeat, and they don't respond to that. But when a man is sincere like Sparks, then they incorporate his beliefs, whether they really understand them or not. And that's what we're seeing here today. And he said when he told the team before the year that the national title was not their goal, he got some rather quizzical yeah, looks. They had a funny, yeah. funny looking face, but they're along for the program. And Reed Four diving into the end zone to complete a touchdown. Like lightning, Myron Reefort, 20 yard, basically untouched. All this stuff we've been talking about, David, here it is. This is how it looks on the football field. <laughs> the big split, the good blocking, the resolve and the belief in principle and coming back, and that's not just clinic talk. It's on the scoreboard. It says 24 to seven which is very surprising, I can assure you, to everyone. Maybe even Carson Newman a little bit. Fleming just does slip that one inside the right upright. And it's 24-7, last year's runner-up, which fell on this field 24-6, running to a huge first half lead. Look at Great class in 1999. 24-7, Carson Newman with an unstoppable beer attack in this first half. Miles brings it out to the 28. And let's send it out to Don McPherson. Thank you, Dave. I'm joined now by Jeff Bentram, inducted into the Division II Hall of Fame last night with Walter Payton, among others. Jeff, what's what's it like to be inducted into the Hall of Fame with a guy like Walter Payton? Wow, uh, Don, it's just a tremendous thrill. I'm still overwhelmed by it. I'm going, Walter Payton, Jeff Bentram, you know, nobody and a hero to uh, millions of people. It's uh, I just, I'm really speechless. It's amazing. People look at Walter Payton and realize that Division II has great football to offer. You played in this championship game four times three-time winner what do you think of this whole championship series uh, I think it's great I, I love the uh, playoff system and uh, you, you earn it in on the field and then come down here to Florence they just do a tremendous job the whole weekend is just uh, a championship weekend and from Wednesday to Saturday night it's just a tremendous weekend they do a great job and it's uh, it's just exciting you also you're the first Holland Hill award winner you're most one of the most celebrated players in division two history what does all this mean to you you know, I have to laugh. I think that all these honors I've been receiving uh, from football, it's uh, I, it's very humbling because I play. I was very fortunate to be on some great teams. We had great defense. We had some great offensive linemen, great coaches. And I just happened to go along for the ride, and, and I get all the accolades, but really, had tremendous teams. Thanks a lot, Dave. Uh, excuse me, and back up to you, Dave. Thanks well, a lot, Jeff. He, he more than belongs. He actually had more touchdowns than Walter Payton during his career at North Dakota State. Travis Miles only back to uh, round the line of scrimmage on that scramble brought down by Michael Wall, the outside linebacker. Very important thing to remember here, Dave, that Northwest Missouri State has been behind in all three of their um, playoff games this year. So this is not anything new to them, and they're not going to quit. They will make a run in this football game at Carson Newman be a real good idea for them to do one right now, see if they can get some kind of points on the board before the half. And with their attack, they've got plenty of time, two and a half minutes. Screen for Jansen and blasted. 
big time. Clarence Lip, red shirt freshman from Newberry, South Carolina. Dance are not only the leading rusher for Northwest Missouri State, their second leading receiver, 37 catches. Yeah, the guy that really destroyed this play was number 80, Ike Curry. If you think I'm partial to Ike because of his name, you're you are. exactly right. Yes, Ike's going to drive inside here. Well, I've got him too far. Right there. And then he's going to keep his feet. He's going to be invited inside. Okay, there he goes. He stumbles, keeps his feet, and gets out in the middle of things, forces Jansen to pull up and get tackled. Last two completions have been for negative yardage by Miles, who has a day and a half and finally decides to run it and is cut down by, guess who? Curry at the 15. Got nice restraint by Curry in that case. He could have gone blowing in there, but he knew that this guy was dangerous on the run. So he held his ground, held his leverage, outside position, and then... When the quarterback started up the middle, he exploded in to make the play. Two excellent plays by Ike Curry, number 80. And now his team's going to get some field position right here before the half. Surprised they're not taking a timeout, Carson Newman, in order to get uh, some time left on the clock. They've got all three of their timeouts. That is a big surprise. They could have saved 30, 35 seconds easily. Brock. Cut down in the, the open field that time right at the 43-yard line by Ryan George. And a marker right at that point. This shouldn't be a halo violation, you wouldn't think. No, I don't think so. I think it may be a personal foul for a pylon. It could be on either team because when it appeared that uh, Northern... Uh, Northwest Missouri had piled on and one of the Carson Newman players retaliated and that's usually where you get in trouble. So they may have offsetting or they may have a personal foul on one or the other. How's that for an expert analysis? <laughs> a definitive, covered everything. A definite maybe. There's no foul. <laughs> the player was down. Coming up at the half, a look at the Division 1, 2A, and Division 3 playoffs, a preview of the Heisman and the college football plays of the year. Brian Kenny in the studio moments away. Now, the official did a worse job than I did. <laughs> no flag, the player was down. Somebody dove on him. There should have been some explanation. There will always be a mystery about that one. Keeping it on the ground and may be satisfied. To, how could you not be satisfied with a 24-7 lead at the half? But uh, they give to Oliver, and they're in no hurry to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, the way that play's been going, the little straight dive reading the defensive end or the defensive tackle, depending on the alignment. Gosh, the thing's been averaging about 15 yards a carry, so I, I would think that might be a real good thing to call. They'll probably try it one more time here. Well, for them, this is really just an average first half. I'm playing an average team, but they're getting the usual result. Now looking deep as guidance for Cockrell, and we'll get a flag on the coverage that time. Marcel Smith. And five seconds left. I believe it's going to be on the offense. It should be because the offensive player was pushing and shoving Cockrum with the inside arm. Guyton has missed on his last eight passes. Uh, Guyton started out with uh, nice accuracy, but again, this is not his strongest suit throwing the football, and especially deep. And that time, I thought Cockrum was guilty of the infraction and had it been a catchable ball, I guess they were going to call it on the defense. I think that would have been a mistake. Don't forget, we have an exciting halftime. So, presumably, the, the last play of the half, 54 yards away, just in case Guyton can get it that deep. Nope. Through the middle, and Oates 
who has a touchdown run, finishes up the first half and a very dominant looking Carson Newman team, which is looking for their first Division II championship game well on their way against defending champion Northwest Missouri State. Up 24-7, we send you to Brian Kenny in the studio. All right, Dave, thank you very much. And here we've over Northwest Missouri State, back here in Florence, Alabama, Dave Barnett and Bill Curry. You surprised by the score and the level of domination we've seen from Carson Newman so far. Yeah, yeah, I am surprised. I think what Carson Newman has done is more than just making up their mind to do well. I think their strategy has worked well. What they've done is they've combated Northwest Missouri State's ability to get in the gaps by running traps, by continuing to hand off the dive, and by, frankly, getting more effort out of their big offensive line. I think it has absolutely taken the sting out of Northwest Missouri State. The Bearcats will have to get something going on offense and they're gonna to have to play much better defense in the second half, that's very obvious. I think the way they'll do it is to try to spread the field, throw the football much more effectively. They will make a run at Carson Newman, that is their style. They've been behind in all three of their playoff games, so they'll come back and Carson Newman will just have to answer. Bearcats uh, gained 67 yards on their first drive and only 20 yards on their five subsequent drives. So they're outgamed on the ground, 219 to 58, and overall 256 to 87. Only six first downs. Last drive, they uh, backed up 12 yards. It actually got worse as the half wore on for the Bearcats. They will get the second half kickoff, though. Miles yet to really uh, make much of an impact on this game. His counterpart, Quez Rump, got Carson Newman going with a championship game record 86-yard punt return. Really seeing the light of fire at that point under the Eagles, and their ground game basically unstoppable from that point on. Red Cop has been keeping it away from Miles fairly successfully, but he returns this one from the eight. And a flag down at the end of the 21-yard return. Tony Miles, 4-5 speed out of the Mart, Texas. Little town in central Texas, not far from Waco. Holding against the Bearcats. Mark off against Northwest Missouri State for holding. Don McPherson, your impressions of the first half. Well, I'll tell you, Dave, I talked to both coaches, and Coach Churchman said he wants to stop the, the, the dive. He's had a little tough time stopping the dive in the last the first half, and the other thing was he wanted to get more composure on the offensive side of the ball. On the Carson Newman side, Coach Fox could not be happy with his team. He was very happy with the way they came out and handled that first half. I guess. How could you be much happier? So now hoping for a defensive stop to open the third quarter. Tucker Woolsey, the fullback, pickup of about four yards or so. All three of their playoff wins, though, as uh, you pointed out, Bill, in the second quarter, they've come from behind down 13 to nothing in the uh, North Dakota game at the half, won it in overtime, 20 to 13. Northern Colorado had them 28-17 going into the fourth quarter. They won that one 41-35, and Indiana State up 12-7, middle of the fourth. They came back in that one 20-12. So not an unfamiliar position for the defending national champs to be in. Is that caught or trapped? They're going to say a catch by Seneca Holmes for a first down to the 39. Seneca Holmes has been big in the playoffs. We talk a lot about Tony Miles and the defense, and quite correctly, must devote a lot of their attention to Tony Miles. Meanwhile, Seneca Holmes has quietly led his team in receiving, and that's the first big play to get the initial first down in the third quarter. This is a very important stretch right through here, as you know, Dave. Jansen, a couple yards off tackle. Seneca Holmes becoming a much bigger factor in postseason play. He's got the best uh, yardage per catch ball there receiver, 17 yards per catch, 17 total catches during the regular season. And he has that many with more yardage just in the postseason. Very 
very effective third wideout alongside J.R. Hill and Tony Miles. Travis Miles flips this one into the Eagle bench over Holmes. Miscommunications here. Here's Bradford. A little uh, extracurricular activity with the hands, but the rule says you can keep your hands on him as long as he's in front of you. And unless the ball had been thrown, there was nothing wrong with what happened there. The adjustment was to have been a fade route. Holmes could not get to the sideline because Bradford wouldn't allow him, so the ball fell harmlessly. You saw the... Numbers by a struggling Travis Miles throws that one on target though and Tony Miles breaks away all the way to the 35. He broke Chris Butler's tackle, continued on for 23 yards. Even on this play, which was a marvelous throw, Travis Miles is a little hesitant. He's not really setting and throwing on rhythm. See him cock the ball and then throw it? When he finally unleashes it, it's a rope. Nice throw, excellent move by Tony Miles to get it up the field beyond the first down marker and inside the 35-yard line. The first good drive since the first of the game for Northwest. First big play since that opening drive, and they go to the reverse. And reversing field yet again is Miles. Butler missed another tackle. Tony Miles had to go back from whence he came, and he turns that into 13 yards. Billy probably ran about 50 yards to get those 13. Yep. You want to know who the best blocker was on this play? Watch number 12, the quarterback, after he hands it off. Just hold your ground. Tony will be back here in a minute. Now, Travis, number 12, picks out the biggest guy on the field and drills him, knocks him down. I'd say that young quarterback wants to win this football game. That's to fire up your teammates when the quarterback is out throwing your body around like that. Woolsey for a couple. This is worth another look. Travis Miles goes to six feet, 200, but he can crunch right there. Yeah, one thing that we used to worry about, there was a guy named John Unitas that I played with, and he thought he needed to block people every chance. We did not want Unitas throwing that old body around, but Travis has a young body, and the guy he picked out is Killings, who may be the toughest guy on the field. Big old defensive lineman, 315 pounds, dropped him on the spot. Second and eight. Miles for Holmes in the end zone, and he's got a touchdown. Seneca Holmes, 20 yards, Bearcats, right back in this game and there it is the initial five minutes of the third quarter thought to be the most important part of every football game by many many experts and here comes northwest missouri state with the inevitable charge to get back in this game and believe me they are 58 total yards at halftime, and they take the second half kick and go 79 yards to make it a 10-point game. Burnell adds the extra point. Travis Miles, a different quarterback here in the second half. Sports Century Book. A great holiday gift. Together and throws a rhythm pass, meaning one, two, three, four, five, set throw. Perfect break to the corner on the post corner route by Seneca Holmes and a touchdown. And we have a brand new football game and a different sense of momentum here. Defense looking like they're feeding off the offense's energy as they swarm Antoine Oliver. Don McPherson. Well, Dave, Northwest Missouri did exactly what Coach Churchman said at halftime, and that's get the composure back on offense. On the on the Carson Newman side, they're telling the defensive players to keep contained first and to calm down. The emotion has been very high here on the Carson Newman bench. Now, the key for Northwest Missouri is to stop the dive. That's exactly what they have to do to shut down this Carson Newman option attack. Second and eight they can live with. 
second and one is what they saw. Good deal in the first 30 minutes. Guyton throwing after showing the option and overthrows Jarvati Jackson. More good news for the Bearcats. They stoned the dive play on first down by simply whooping the blocker, which they had not been doing in the first half. And then on second down, Guyton, who started the game with remarkable accuracy, continued his run of inaccurate passing. Over his last nine. That's inaccurate. Ain't it, baby? Now, third and eight in the first half was still a running down for them. Not now. Guyton sets up the screen. It bounces off. Reed for his hands. Incomplete. Very nice play call. I think that was a good play call by the offensive coordinator Mike Turner for Carson Newman. When all the emotions running high, you sprint one way and the throwback screen the other way gives you a good chance to expedite something that you do against the quick movement of the defense. But again, the ball was overthrown, and so we have a punt. Tony Miles would love to get a crack at a return. This is a big kick, though, by Cop. And Miles cannot escape the 20-yard line. 47-yard kick by Rhett Cop. Well, again, tonight at 8 Eastern, you want to be right here on ESPN to see who wins the 99 Heisman Trophy. We bring you the Heisman Trophy presentation from the Downtown Athletic Club of New York for the sixth consecutive year. Ron Dane, the favorite going in, but you never know. What if Joe Hamilton sneaks in after his uh, terrific season at Georgia Tech? And I, I admire you for predicting a Dane victory despite the numbers that we show you from Joe Hamilton. That doesn't mean that I'm not pulling for little Joe, though. He's the best player. Of course, I'm totally objective. David Jansen with the toss sweep. A couple of yards. That was a big gainer early for Northwest Missouri State. And the Eagles uh, have pretty well solved it since then. Matthew Burris made first contact, the middle linebacker. Been a big year all around for Carson Newman. A baseball team made the Division II Championship Series here in Alabama last May. Now the football team right back where they were a year ago when they fell 24-6 to the same Bearcat squad. But they led by 17 at the half. Miles really is a different man. J.R. Hill makes the catch for the first down. The one thing he's getting tied. Exactly. You took the words right out of my mouth. The big guys up front are doing a terrific job of protecting him. That was not the case in the first half. They're pelting Thompson, Glab, Barrett, and Williams. Really doing a good job against an outstanding front four. Now you see number 70, Charles Huff sitting there in the middle kind of spying, but everybody else is coming hard. They're not getting close. Draw play for Jansen, and he plunges right through the gut for about seven yards. Charles Huff, sophomore from Fort Valley, Georgia, on the contact. There's a tempo and a rhythm that you hope to get as an offensive unit. Northwest Missouri State now has that. You hit them with the outcut, you come back with the draw. The defensive linemen are thinking, do I charge up the field? Do I squat for the draw? I'm not quite sure. That moment of hesitation is what gives a good offense a chance to move down the field. You saw it, four out of five, 69 yards. Still early in the third quarter. Miles should have had that one, and he knows it. Broke free from Chris Butler. Ball was right there from Travis Miles. Travis Miles is hot now, and what he really needs is for his key players, like Tony Miles, to keep making plays for him. This ball's perfectly thrown on the dig. It takes time to develop. Tony Miles here, coming in on the dig, tries to catch it in his chest rather than with his hands. A big mistake, and the ball's on the ground. Third and short. 
the offset eye over the middle of the tight end. Steve Culver, first down oh, and more to the 48. Oh, man, that is so pretty. The pop pass to the tight end. Comer shows us why he makes all conference right here in the traffic. Lots of noise, lots of smashing. He just secures the football for the first. Caught it the way Miles should have. Caught the ball in his hands. Another expert observation from you. Well, they caught me a couple oh, yeah. of times, right. finally. <laughs> I remember a few. I think it's the other way around. 48-yard line. This is the tight balance that they specialized in all year. Now they go to the option. Strung out. Wolsey nowhere to go. Jason Slimp. A very effective nickelback. Their fourth leading tackler sharing time at free safety with Montre Ford. Yeah, this is where offensive coordinator Jim Swoboda pulls one of his options out of the hat. Hat to hat. Loss of one. Double tight end this time. Great drop, and that one is intercepted by Butler. Chris Butler victimized on the scoring drive with a couple of missed tackles. Has his revenge. Team leading sixth interception of the year for Butler. Miles and the Bearcats still down 10. Reach up. 54 14, Carson Newman here, 748 in the third quarter. An interception on the previous play. Now, this is a double zone. There are two people on this side of the field. The quarterback should be able to see that. Therefore, you don't throw the out cut. That corner can sit on the outcut, which is exactly what he does, and Butler comes up with the interception. So Carson Newman now has the ball back, and the momentum shifts back and forth in this exciting game. Guyton with the late pitch to Oliver, Don McPherson. Well, Dave, Coach Bill Curry, you're exactly right. It's a very dangerous throw for Travis Miles, and for two other reasons. First of all, he's a right-handed quarterback, making the out throw to the field from the right hash. Most dangerous throw in the football is across the field, throwing the out. That ball is in the air a long time for that defensive back to undercut it. Antoine Oliver now over the 100-yard mark, 11 carries for 103. Bearcats have the only turnovers in this Division II title game. Oliver. About half what he needed for the first. They'll line up at the 45, still needing two yards on third down. Dave, did it sound like to you that Don McPherson had some experience in making that long throw into double coverage? It did, and it almost sounded like he might have thrown an interception or two, although <laughs> no, I don't recall it. I don't think so. I don't think sure. so. They, they, they used to say I had a noodle arm. They called it a chicken wing. <laughs> and I was smart enough not to throw it out there <laughs> because too many too many guys took it the other way. I got tired of chasing them. Hey, I saw you play. They were chasing you most of the time. <laughs> Carson Newman uh, with an injury to check in right now. As we remind you, the ESPN College Hoops continues with a doubleheader tonight on ESPN2, first of all, 7 Eastern Wisconsin and South Florida in the Tampa Bay Shootout here on ESPN at 9 Eastern, number 22, Kentucky, number 19, Maryland. A rocky start for the Wildcats, not getting any easier as they travel to take on the Turks tonight at 9. Getting helped off for uh, Carson Newman is their senior center from Speedwell, Tennessee, Dan Turner. Mike Rigdon replacing Dan Turner. Third and two. Guyton over the middle, all along. Brandon Fletcher, the tight end, is down to the 10-yard line. Terrific call. Absolutely brilliant play call by Mike Turner, the offensive coordinator. And he did a couple of things there. Not only did he get the long game, the big first down, and take it inside the 10, but he said to his quarterback, Guyton, 
All right, we know you've missed 10 in a row. We still believe in you. We're going to throw the ball in a critical situation. Fletcher looking that ball in, making sure. I don't think the big man gets a chance to catch too many. <laughs> nope, that's a six. Yeah, he was real happy to hem that one up. 35 yards. First and goal, Carson Newman. Now back to the ground game. Oliver down to the five. That's just power football. The lineman blocking down with a lead back. It's like an isolation play out of the eye. Oliver following up in there behind his compadre Butler, who cleared the way. Now it's down to the five. Second and goal from there. Oates joining Oliver in the backfield. Lots of movement, but no whistle. Ryan Williams uh, first to cross the line. Offside on the defense at the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. You got offside, then you got offside. Yeah, for the long-time, old-time Packer fans, Bart Starr was the master of the staccato snap count. The defense shouldn't be listening, but Guyton has also mastered that. That's the second time today he's gotten the green hats across the ball early. Second and goal to go. Oliver, not quite in. Laid that ball over the goal line, but already ruled down inside the one. Alan Buckwalter, the freak who has some amazing athleticism out there at defensive end, made the tackle. The most amazing athleticism about Buckwalter or Northwest Missouri State's version of the freak is the 440-pound hang clean. That's a lot of weight, and he's going to need every ounce of it down here on the one-yard line. This is where you find out what you're made out of. National championship on the line. Guy with a get to Oates, who has the touchdown. Second today for Melvin Oates. Yep, and an answer from Brett Mistak, number 52 left tackle, and Clay Clevenger, 73, the left guard, the strongest offensive lineman on this team, made their short yardage goal line statement, hey, we're taking it in, we're knocking our guy back, and that's what happened. That's how you end up in the end zone. Northwest Missouri State had momentum until the interception. They had cut it to 10 and were driving again. And Butler with the takeaway. That turns into six, but only six as the uh, point after is no good. But Ken Sparks and Carson Newman regaining the momentum and they lead by 16. Brief period, uh, Northwest Missouri State seemed to be in control, not on the scoreboard, but in terms of the momentum on the field, and that uh, turnover changes everything. Carson Newman right back on top, 30-14. to 14. Only had to go 53 yards to get Oates' second touchdown. Tony Miles. One more block and could really have sprung that one big. As it is, it's a 16-yard return, and Travis Miles will try to rebound after the turnover that stopped the Northwest Missouri State drive last time. Travis Miles has had an outstanding year, but he's made two critical mistakes today, both of which could have been avoided if he had simply read the coverage properly. Both of those interceptions were thrown in situations which allowed the defensive back to play it very close to the vest because he had help behind him. Double coverage in both cases resulted in the interception. Rolling after the play fake. Had an open man and overthrew him. Scott Porter, who had gone in motion. Free up the right sideline and not a catchable ball from Travis Miles. You may have noticed as we just ran through those scores, there will 
be a new Division III champion. You may have noticed Mount Union upset in overtime by Rowan, so their long winning streak is over. Northwest Missouri State winners of 28 of 29 over the last two years. Under Mel Churchman. 4.33 to go, third quarter. Second and... Simpson runs into his own blocker. That could have been much bigger than it was had Monty Williams not plugged the gap. Slim finished him off. Here's the second interception by Travis Miles. We've shown you this once, but there are two B DBs on this side of the field. This safety's job is to take the deep route, so this man doesn't have to worry about it. Butler just sits right on this out cut. He might as well be the receiver. Quarterbacks are trained to see, is there somebody behind that guy? If so, don't throw the out cut. He's not going to bite on it. Third and seven. Miles to miles. And uh, Butler had the coverage that time, but Miles has the first down and more to the 38. Very important ingredient in outstanding quarterbacks is how they respond after they make mistakes. What is Travis Miles going to do after the fact of the mistake? He answers here, sets up, makes that tough throw that Don McPherson described, the out cut to the wide side of the field, and he throws it perfectly. Fourth catch for Tony Miles. Showing his ability today to make something out of nothing. He's done it a couple of times. This one thrown right at Butler. Intended for Holmes Butler for the second series in a row with an interception for Carson Newman. His seventh pick of the year. Right back about where he brought the last one to the 45. Travis Miles has gotten his composure rattled here. And from a perfect throw on the previous play, he simply throws this thing up for grabs. And if he gets to the sideline and is asked, what were you thinking, son? He's going to say, I don't know, coach. I was just trying to make a play. Sometimes when it gets to going rough, you try too hard. And that's what it appears is happening to this fine young quarterback on his third interception. Now, Butler may have the toughest job on the field, too, because he's got to track Tony Miles all over the place. And, and he's given up some, but he's shown some resilience by getting two of his own on those last two possessions. Don McPherson? Well, Dave, I, I spoke with Travis Miles yesterday, and when you talk with this young man, you realize one thing. He is a competitor. He's a guy who wants to let his teammates help him out and do the right thing. But you can tell there he's not setting his feet. He might be pressing a little bit. Again, being the competitor that he is, he's going to think he can stick that ball in there. Well, he has some, but he's also been picked off three times. And his team is still down 16. Had to wait to see whether uh, Guyton would keep that or not. At the last instant, finally gave it to Oliver on that dive. Yeah, and if you saw Guyton sort of jump up and slap his hip a little bit, he knows he should have pulled that thing. You put it in the stomach, you read the defense the best you can, and every now and then you get fooled. Not very often, but had Guyton pulled that ball and carried it on to continue the triple option, it could have been another big play for the men in orange bridges. Back the last 15 years or so, and the Veer attack has been very successful at the D2 level. Intercepted for Northwest Missouri State, Ryan Miller. And will tack on face masking at the end of the return. Miller with a great read that time of the pass by Guyton. Guyton assumed that with the corner on the hash that it would be a zone defense and that he would continue to deepen. He does something called route reading here. He takes a calculated risk and jumps on the ball. He did not have coverage behind him. And he just decided he was going to make a play and the gamble paid off. 
You add on the face mask, they're back in business at the 35-yard line. And this game rocks back and forth with mistakes by the QBs. That's the big face mask. First Mark off, 15, 15 yards. Yeah, that's the one where you grab hold and you don't let go. Brandon Fletcher got him. New life for Travis Miles, picked off the last two series by Chris Butler. Shotgun draw turns into a reverse for Miles. And about as well defended as you could ask, really. Marcus Early, cracking down Miles, picked up yardage, though, all the way to the 27. And Chris Butler is building a case here in this game for being the outstanding defensive player for Carson Newman. The reason that play did not go big is because Chris Butler held his position and turned the thing back inside. A lot of time, the corner that's got backside contained, meaning back over here where you see the ball coming at number 21 right there, forces him back inside to the pursuit, so it's second and one instead of a touchdown. Jansen rolls the out ahead, but can't get the lead block set on Michael Wall and Mark Zirkler. What a play by Michael Wall at the most critical time. Number 53, Michael Wall has contained. His job is to get out there and keep that thing from getting outside him, and that's exactly what he does. You can take a look at Wall here. His job is to skate to the sideline and keep this thing from getting outside. Here comes the big blocker on him. Two blockers, flips them both, comes off, makes the play for a loss. That's called keeping the outside on three, keeping them from getting to that sideline. Third and four as the third quarter comes to a close. That's enough for a first down. J.R. Hill to the 22. The two dominant teams over the last two years in Division II football have one quarter to go in their rematch for the national championship. Start of the fourth quarter, Florence, Alabama, Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Don McPherson, the Division II championship game, led by Carson Newman, Northwest Missouri State, though, trying to claw their way back again. First down carry by the fullback, Tucker Woolsey. It was 24-7, Carson Newman at the half. Northwest Missouri State drove 79 yards with the opening kick of the third quarter. Held, came back, and looked as if they were ready to score again, but Chris Butler with the first of two third-quarter interceptions stemmed that momentum. Bearcat defense got it right back for him on Ryan Miller's interception. And they've reached the 19 of the Eagles. Travis Miles for J.R. Hill couldn't hang on. That play got to make if you're trying to come from behind. Yeah, and yes and no. This time there was pressure, and it caused the throw to be just a little errant. Killings is in there. The throw is a little bit behind Hill, and he probably should have made the catch, but had the protection been as good as it was on the previous drive, he probably would have made a perfect throw and there might have been a catch there, but Killings made the difference. Cedric Killings selected in the preseason as the number one defensive player in Division II in America, showing why he was chosen as such. During the year, 41% third downs for the Bearcats. Matthew Burris chasing and finally tripping up Miles. Or some quick linebackers out there for Carson Newman. Oh, yeah, this is a great play by Matthew Burris. So many times you see a linebacker run through like this, and he either takes a poor angle or simply gives up. Look at him accelerate. He runs down the quarterback, and Travis Miles is a quick guy. And we are at decision time now. And very wisely, Northwest Missouri State takes a timeout to think it over. When we come back, they're looking at fourth and two, early fourth quarter. Decide to go for it on fourth and two, down 16. Yep, and it's not such an easy decision with a great kicker because you could cut the lead to 13 with the field goal, but they're going to try to get the cut. 
Play action. Incomplete, but a flag intended for Ryan George. Butler made contact. One way or the other, Chris Butler has had an impact on just about everything that's happened in this second half. And they get him for holding. <laughs> One other reality of football is you can go very quickly from elation to despair, especially if you grab a little shirt, which he did. It wasn't a flagrant foul, just a little bit of a flag there. And Travis Miles eager to help out the official. I know the official really appreciates that. Need all help they can get. They always oh, yes. like we, it to come from the players. As something. players and coaches, we love to assist the officials in their duties. So that moves it to the seven where it's first and goal. Now the flip side of the discussion I was having just a moment ago about narrowing the lead to 13 is if you get two touchdowns and two two-point conversions, the score is tied you got OT. Give to Jansen, who ran into Travis Miles. Not Almost a good time. Barely made that handoff clean. Oh, yeah, not a good time for ball handling difficulties. It's something you're surprised to see at this point in the season with the tailback and the quarterback running together. A fellow could get hurt like that. That is surprising. You're I think your 15th game of the year. Well, I think Jansen was just getting excited, just like I'm getting excited, butting in here. I and mean, this is exciting. <laughs> you love football. And it's the game of one. So from the six, this time they fake the reverse, and Jansen still has it. They did not fool Butler, who again is in on a key play. Tried that play in the third quarter. Jansen gave it to Miles and picked up eight yards, and this time he may actually lose one. And both times they were really trying to exploit Chris Butler. And I mentioned a moment ago about the quarterback coming back after a negative play and trying to respond with a positive one. Butler just got tagged with a big-time interference on fourth down. He comes back, holds his ground, doesn't run off chasing a reverse, makes the play to knock the ball out of bounds, and actually there was a little loss of yardage there. Got a question on the clock now, which shows 12.46 to go, and they may adjust that. Add six seconds. Up to 12.52. Good coaching staffs have somebody responsible for the clock. Somebody on the coaching staff watches to see if clock should have been run off or if too much was run off to be sure that it's correct, especially if it works to your advantage. Ain't that surprising. Third and goal from the seven. Miles is wide right. Hill left. Travis Miles having to roll. Gets a block from Jansen. Now pulls up all alone in the end zone. Tony Miles. Travis to Tony. And they're ready to go for two and cut the lead in half. In studying the film of Travis Miles, the most outstanding characteristic about him was coming into this game the fact that he could scramble move and not just run with the ball but find somebody open i now think the most impressive thing about the young man is the way he comes back from three interceptions keeps his poise and gets his team right back into this football game he has had plenty of chances to show resilience and he has every time just within the development of that play alone looked like he was going to break down. He was going to get sacked. And from disaster, he turns it into a touchdown strike. And now the try for two to get within eight. And they get that one. Wide open, Steve Comer. So Travis Miles brings the defending champs back within one score. A lot of folks have made their way from Maryville, Missouri. Things look bleak. At the half, they were down 24-7. They've come back, and Travis Miles has engineered a pair of second-half scoring drives. 
Finishing that one off with two-point conversion pass to Comer. About our fifth or sixth momentum swing of this half. On the return, May with a flag at the end of the return near the 35. Grant Sutton with the hit out of bounds. Face mask against Northwest Missouri State. Yep, that's most assuredly a face mask and a and that's a big foul. Back to the field position thing. When you start the ball. 15 yards to the end of the run. First down. Here's the call. That I believe on Jason Gassman. Jason Gassman just gave Carson Newman superb field position. Tough to stop people out here when they start near midfield with a good offense. 46-yard line. This was their bread and butter throughout the first half. And it works nicely for first down yardage for Myron Refor. Finally tracked down by the nose guard, Brian Schertz. And as their defense struggles against this powerful Carson Newman offense, they are fortunate to be within eight, but they've got to get them stopped here. Unfortunately, they see Refor limp off. And he will be replaced at least on this play by Melvin Oates. And Quad Oliver for a couple. Really puts you in mind of uh, the originator of the veer, the Houston Cougars of the 60s and 70s. Because at the Division I level, you don't see it that much, but at the Division II level, which we're watching right here, it accounted for 12 of the 13 national titles in the period between 1983 and 95. That is amazing. You're talking about the one that Bill Yeoman put in out there. Homer Rice really sophisticated this thing even before that at the University of Cincinnati. Last three champions have gone away from the Veer, including Northwest Missouri last year. Broken play. Guyton engulfed. Had nowhere to go. Buck Walter at the line of scrimmage. Third and nine coming. Here's what can happen when things get a little hectic, no matter how poised you are, no matter how many times you've been there, Guyton goes the wrong way here. Awful lot of noise. You cannot believe how loud the Northwest Missouri State fans are. It sounds like we're up in Michigan somewhere with 111,000, Dave. Football at its best. Not quite as many folks, but almost as much noise, and you saw movement. Oliver moves it to a first down game if the play stands. Well, I'll tell you where the movement was. It was in Oliver's legs. And Matt Vogie and the defensive lineman for the Bearcats are paying far too much attention to the snap count of Leonard Guyton. He has got them lurching and jumping. They should simply look at the football and not get tied up. So they're going to take the Oliver leg drive here instead of the penalty. Watch this guy twist a 360 spin. He's running over people, through people, around people. It's sheer determination and balance. They decline the offsides. They move to the 32 of the Bearcats. Guyton keeps on the option for seven, eight, nine yards near the 23 hit by Buck Walter. He scored 11 touchdowns on the ground this year, so defenses hate it when you got both running backs tracked down and you still have to worry about the quarterback as a running weapon. Yep, in this offense, there aren't just two running backs on the field. That quarterback is also a weapon. Guyton is a master of executing this thing and knowing when to turn it up inside as he did then on the counter option. 3-4 back after limping off a couple of plays ago. And some uh, 
questions in Guyton's head whether everybody was sure on the play or the snap count, so he calls timeout. With 9.51 to go as they look to add to an eight-point lead. Carson Newman ready now after the timeout. They have two left, both teams two timeouts left, to go second and two. And open, where's Rump? He has first and goal at the eight-yard line. Since his 86-yard punt return touchdown in the first quarter, I don't know that we've heard from Quez at all, but he shows up here. Well, he was huge in that, and he's huge here. The toughest play, I think, to defense against an option offense is to read this thing here. You've got an option responsibility here. You've got a pass responsibility here. How do you do both? The answer is you don't. So there you are in no man's land, and suddenly the ball's thrown behind you, and they're knocking at the door inside the 10. From the 7. If Guyton keeps that, he might score untouched. Instead, he gave it to Refor, who ran right into the defensive lineman, Brandon Simpson, 99, the senior from Grandview, Missouri. Yeah, he'd like to have that read back. Things happen awfully quickly this time of the game. Quarterbacks are human as well as uh, the rest of the players, and they get a little adrenaline pumping. Ball at a loss of one. Whistles that time before Guyton got the snap. And the play clock, I think, ran down on him. Maybe. Don McPherson. Well, Dave, prior to this last series, both sidelines were talking about patience. Northwest Missouri said, hey, let's we just be patient. We'll get the ball back. We, can, we know we can score now. Carson Newman, obviously, you know they want to be patient. They want to run this clock down. As the clock starts to run down, Northwest Missouri will start to press. And that's when that play that Bill Curry just talked about, throwing the ball off the option becomes more effective. You have the defensive line trying to stop and squeeze the option play, squeeze the dive play. That gives you greatest separation for that wide out to get in behind the linebackers. Well, illegal procedure will test the patience of Ken Sparks. Yes, another potentially drive-killing penalty, one of those things that they do not own. So goal to go now from the 13. Guyton got that one off to Oates just as he was being wrapped up by Simpson. And Oates reaching the 10. Brandon Simpson is only their 20th leading tackler. 28 stops for the year, but six sacks. So when he's in there, he knows how to get into the backfield and disrupt. He knows how, and the system is designed to get him penetration. What happened to this option is he had to pitch off the wrong man. Brandon Simpson penetrated. He was hitting the quarterback, so he didn't get to carry out the option to the end of the line of scrimmage, and that's why it was stopped for a short game. Three wideouts, and Guyton will keep it and dive and score. Touchdown. Now, this is as much play calling by Mike Turner, the offensive coordinator, as it is execution. He remembered that there was a nice gap for the quarterback the last time he called his counter option. See the reverse pivot? Now, zoom, he's back up inside. The way they played that was to widen to prevent the pitch, and the man who had the quarterback was literally faked out of position. Extra point tacked on by Fleming. We talked about some of the decisions Guyton would like to have back on that drive. He made the perfect decision to keep here, and he gets the 37-22 lead on the board for the Eagles. Bearcats again down two scores, and that's assuming they get a two-point conversion in there somewhere. What a big 54-yard drive finished off by Guyton. 37-22. Miles. Miles will bring this one back untouched. They will not catch it. 81 yards, and just like that, the Bearcats storm right back in the game.
Tony Miles. <laughs> Tony Miles, Tony Miles, been the big play man all year long. Really achieved his most statistical success in the kicking game on punt returns, Dave, with a 21-yard average. This is his first touchdown return of a kickoff, and it was a short kick. We decide to go ahead and get the one now, worry about the two later, and so they are within eight. Now, that's your, uh, that's your ideal scoring drive. <laughs> took out the, yeah, the, if the you're behind, it, uh, that ain't no drive, Dave. The amount of time it took him to run 81 yards that was is the drive. That is smoke. That was just plain smoke. He made three people miss, and suddenly he was gone. Kicker, by the way, injured on that PAT. Here it is, 81 yards. One, two, three. Goodbye. This man is something very special, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him playing after this on Sunday afternoons. This is the stuff of great players. I don't know if Purnell got hit, number 20, the kicker, and I think he is an outstanding kicker. I think he qualifies for the highest kind of um, attention. There's a look. I guess accidentally the guy just uh, clipped him on the ankle. Yeah, it's probably just a bruise. They'll give him, they'll tape an aspirin to it over there and he'll be fine. <laughs> they need this guy. With the score 37-29, they need him to make a really good kickoff here and they need to cover it. Both these teams have been sporadic in their coverage. We mentioned that earlier. And when you're sporadic with these kinds of returners, both squads have the men to take it the distance on you. He was great a moment ago. Oh, well, come on and say it like Tony the Tiger. Great. Carson Newman just cannot get any feeling of comfort in this game. If, if the Division II defending champions are going to go down, they are going to go down swinging. Be assured of that. Purnell's going to shake it off and... Be out there for the kick. No comfort margin really whatsoever for Ken Sparks in search of his first Division II championship. Five times they won it in the NAIA. Moved up in 93 to D2. They've been ranked 80 consecutive weeks in Division II. The last 48 in the top 10. That's a great kick inside the five. Maine with the return out to the 23. Eight Eastern tonight. We will find out whether Ron Dane is in fact the 99 Heisman Trophy winner. ESPN's sixth consecutive year will be at the Downtown Athletic Club in New York to bring you the Heisman Trophy presentation. Joe Hamilton will be there. Chad Pennington, Drew Brees, and Michael Vick. They the lone non-quarterback making the list of the five finalists this year. Also, it's the 25th anniversary of Archie Griffin's back-to-back -back awards. And we'll have a special conversation with Archie Griffin tonight. 8 Eastern on ESPN. Melvin Oates breaking a couple of tackles. Turns that one into about 18, 19, 20 yards make it all the way to the 44. Now let me tell you what you're seeing here in case you don't understand this whole context. You're seeing about 150 of the most determined young men in America to make their team win the most recent manifestation that run by Oates. He was not going to be denied just like his counterpart, Tony Miles, the previous plate. Folks are out here busting it trying to win this national championship. Folks squad. And maybe busting it a little bit too much from time to time. Yep, a whole lot too much in that case. Kurt Ramage. Charge the snap. Ball start. On the offense. Five yards. Repeat the down. Go down to Don McPherson. Well, Dave, a, a key loss for Northwest Missouri is Matt Vogey is out of the ballgame. Defensive tackle for Northwest Missouri is out of the ballgame. They worked on his right, his right ankle. He's in a lot of pain and unable to go. That is tough news. Matt Vogey, who changed from number 93 to number 57 for uh, 
purpose of honoring his younger brother, Phil, who died in a car accident before their last regular season game. He did not want to finish this national championship game on the sideline. Oliver takes the pitch. Big yardage again. Antoine Oliver. 19 yards. The beauty of the arc block option. Right out there, Quez Rump, number seven, knocks Carlson down, opening up the sideline for Antoine Oliver. Perfect pitch, and he's down the sideline. It's a lot like watching the Kentucky, Kentucky Derby when they come down the stretch. It's beautiful when it's executed properly. Cats needing a quick three and out. Forget that. Now they're just trying to hold them out of field goal range. Marker for illegal procedure again. Again, Kurt Ramage. Carson Newman and how they look at a successful uh, offensive game plan. Yeah, um... The offensive line has to have graded out well so far today. No fumbles, which is remarkable when you consider they had 38 on the year. One interception. They've had too many penalties. They've actually been two or three of those. Orange zone, three for three. Third down conversions, eight for 13. Excellent execution overall. Tenth penalty. 82 yards loss for the Eagles. Inside the 45-yard line, Oliver brought down by Cole Sidwell. That could well turn into a dry killing penalty. There is some real serious competition going on in this football game. I must tell you, these kids are playing their hearts out. This is exciting to see. Kurt Ramage in there, he jumped off sides earlier, hadn't been playing a lot. He stepped in for Henry Lee. Now he's got himself under control. He's played well here the last few snaps. Guyton. Somehow gets the pitch with a flag down. Pitch Oliver takes forward. it up the side, and exactly what it looked like, I think they're going to call. Oliver was maybe a foot or two ahead of uh, Guyton when that pitch came. It is the pitchback's responsibility now to stay in proper relationship. Yeah, they must have called it on the defense. I think they got away with one there. Let's see what he calls. Pitch back on the defense. We'll add five yards to the end of the run. Wow. They call that on Buck Walter, number 87. The freak up here at the top of the screen. Here's Buck Walter coming off. I don't know if he got face mask. No, I don't think he did. Shoulder pad. And I think the ball was pitched forward. So the officials aren't perfect. They're human, too. There's a lot of emotion down there on that field. They missed one. It was very costly for Northwest Missouri State. First and ten. Up in motion. Oates racing to the corner and caught over there by David Carlson. Coming up on ESPN when we complete our Division II championship game, the road to Indy. This veer attack of Carson Newman spearheaded by Antoine Oliver, the sophomore out of Montezuma, Georgia who has carried it 21 times for 158 yards. Raleigh Municipal Stadium, Florence, Alabama. Well, these two met a year ago, and Northwest Missouri State won it 24-6. Melvin Oates spins his way to a first down inside the 15-yard line. <laughs> Worth another look and listen. Now that last boom you heard right there was Carlson, number 46, who's about to boom himself out of this game. In fact, he is having to leave the field. He needs to come under control a little bit better. He makes big hits, but he doesn't wrap up, and that's why the game occurred, and he actually hurt himself. Now watch the clock if you're the Bearcats. He's down to the 4-10 mark. 3-4. He is down to the 12-yard line. 
Now that was Brian Williams, number 49, who's the real leader and the heart and soul of this defense, making his 10th tackle unofficially. Well, he averaged 339 coming in. They have exceeded that against the defending champ. Impressive. Yeah, especially when you consider they had 91 against these guys a year ago. Oliver, still going, breaks tackle to the goal line, got in, touchdown. And again, Carson Newman breaking back in front by 14. It goes back to the field position thing and the penalty on the kickoff return which gave Carson Newman the football at the 45-yard line. And even though they were in their own territory, they only had 55 yards to go. And you can't give a short field to a determined offense. They took advantage of the superb field position. And the face mask call. The second half pattern continues. Extra point good. Bearcats score, put the heat on the Eagles. Carson Newman comes right back and opens the lead up again to 15. 3.33 to go. Now this line split and this line split are unconscionable in most situations. <laughs> Northwest Missouri State's having a tough time getting lined up. They're not sure where Sidwell's saying, where do I go? He's standing up. And the next thing you know, Antoine Oliver's running by them, runs right through the great middle linebacker, Williams, and drags him into the end zone because he's unimpeded at the line of scrimmage. This is simply out-executing the defense by Carson Newman, being more determined, getting to the line of scrimmage, and getting the job done when it counts the very most. I wish we had a, a stat for tacklers carried by Antoine Oliver. That, that'd be well in the double figures. Yeah, the TC would be up, I imagine, in triple digits. I don't know how many folks he's carried down the field, but it's a bunch. Dave, he's about as good as any back we've seen this year. He's uh, doing a fairly credible Rondane impersonation. I'll say. Now, how surprised will you be to see Tony Miles get a chance to return this kick? Uh, if it were me, I would kick the thing on the ground. I would squib this. I would not let either one of them run it back without the ball bouncing around. Big to him last time. He brought it back 81 yards. What will Rick Cop have in mind this time? Hangs it up high. And Seneca Holmes grabs it at the 26. College hoops coming up tonight at 9 Eastern. Number 22, Kentucky. Struggling a little bit out of the gate. They got a tough one tonight at number 19, Maryland. Jamal McGlore and the Wildcats against Terrence Morris and the Terps. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific tonight on ESPN. Bearcats, two timeouts, two scores down, three and a half minutes to go 74 yards. Miles run in motion, Travis Miles going deep for Holmes, double covered and a flag and a good call here. Easy call against Michael Breadwood who had his back turned and in midair gave Holmes a push. This offensive line broke down big time once again, Miles throws it up for grabs. Totally unnecessary shove by Breadwood. He's got double coverage. He's got a friend behind the, the receiver there. All he's got to do is go up in the air. Face masking in college football is legal. He can, he can shield the face of the receiver. He doesn't need to push him. 15 yards, previous spot. Automatic first down. Now, Travis Miles can be excused for throwing that one up for grabs because he's got to do something here. they got to get two scores in three and a half minutes, so take a chance. Yes, put it up. You're trying to do anything but help them out with 15-yard penalties, and just like that, they're up to the 41. And it stops the clock. Miles could have kept out of the shotgun. Instead, he throws to his tight end, Woolsey, who stops the clock at the 40, 18 yards. So they snapped it twice, picked up 33 yards. Woolsey shows good presence here to help his quarterback, first of all, by getting to an open spot, 
Nice presence by Miles. When I talk about presence, I'm talking about keeping your wits about you under great pressure. And then the stocky fullback, tight end type, goes down the sideline. Actually, H-back, those guys, all those, both tight ends and the fullback line up in a variety of positions. And he gets out of bounds and gets this clock stop. Very important. One of those tight ends, Mark Moss in motion. Miles on a roll, looking for Tony Miles, broken up inside the 15 by Charlie Walker. That's a hard play. A good job by Charlie Walker. He had outside leverage because he knew he had help coming from the inside. So Charlie went up, timed his leap perfectly, did not get on Miles' back, which he could have very easily. Tipped the ball away. Nice job. That's a nice play. There comes the help from inside out. Look at Tony Miles, he gets single coverage much the rest of the way. Tried to make the diving catch and couldn't quite get to this one. He was a little longer than five feet nine, maybe. Protection has begun to struggle under the relentless pressure from these big guys. For Carson Newman, led by Killings, Kippolite, Charles Huff, Torrey Griffin, Griffin, right in his face. So they're beginning to move him and spit him out. And he doesn't throw quite as well on the run as he does when he's sitting in that pocket. So, subpar numbers for Travis Miles today. Great protection this time, though, and it starts to break down finally. Throws it back across the field to J.R. Hill. Got a block from Holmes in the open field, and now Hill steps out of bounds at the seven. 33 yards. Travis Miles' patience after the great protection makes this happen. The reason the protection is so good is you got five blockers on three rushers, but there are eight dropping into zones here, so there's nobody open. And again, Travis Miles shows his greatest asset, which is to move around, find somebody open, and get the ball to him with a nice, easy throw. Hill should not be allowed to escape like this and get this far inside the territory of Carson Newman, but there he is, and here we are at 246, and they're about to score again. That is uh, Montre Ford. Injured free safety down for Carson Newman. A timeout with 2.46 to go. This one's still far from over. The, the junior free safety from DeKalb, Texas, down a long time, and he popped back up. He's right there in his usual spot, and they're ready to go first and goal from just inside the eight-yard line. 2.46 to play, fourth quarter. Hill in motion. Miles in the shotgun. Are they come after it. Floater to Hill at the goal line, and he's got it. Touchdown. They just won't die. Big risk when you come after a quarterback that's as good as this. And an offensive unit that is as polished as this. Here they come. Everybody's blitzing. Everybody's picked up, bumped off. Beautiful offensive work. You can't do it any better than that. I'm talking about protecting your quarterback. If the quarterback is blitzed and has that much time, he's going to beat you. Again, they decide to go for one here and get it. So they're within eight. If they score again, then they'll worry about the try for two. But Hill has them in position to even think such thoughts. That's execution. That's hours and hours of practice. Blitz pickup every Wednesday, I'll guarantee you, happens on the practice field for the Bearcats. Otherwise, you wouldn't see those big guys up front and the backs doing such a fine job. Travis Miles keeping his jersey clean, giving his man Hill a chance to get open in the end zone for the touch. The countdown continues. 50 greatest athletes of the century with number six Friday night at 10 Eastern, Jesse Owens. No doubt an extensive look back at the 1936 Olympics and then at 10.30, the great one, Wayne Gretzky. 
number five on the all-time list, so we're down to four. You can pretty much figure who the four are, if not the order. You still have Ali out there. You still got Jordan, Babe Ruth. Don McPherson. Jim Brown, Pele, Don McPherson, Bill Curry. <laughs> you don't put Curry in there, but I'll tell you, McPherson, you got to remember that our man on the sideline was number two in the Heisman Trophy voting, 1987, and probably should have won. There again, another one of my objective opinions. <laughs> Bill Curry, that's why I came all the way here to Florence and spent some time with you. <laughs> well, big man, I believe it. Tim Brown just nosed him out that year. They are going to um, try the onside kick, and that's something that they have to do. Both teams, two timeouts. Unless we get a big surprise here. Well, the way he's teed it up, that would be a real big surprise. He can always it's tell a real good kicker because he has a different color shoe on his kicking foot. So Carson Newman's hand team out there. They hope for the big bounce. Eagles get the recovery of the onside kick at the 43-yard line. Jarvati Jackson. Yep, that's the good hands people. There's a company that I don't know who it is, but uses that. The good hands people are up there in the front, and it is their job to be aggressive like a good shortstop and charge that thing, and that's exactly what Jarvani did. Well, Carson Newman would join this impressive list of unbeaten Division II champions, 13-0 coming into this one. Northwest Missouri State pulled it off last year. North Dakota State three times between 83 and 90, and North Alabama, which plays right here on this, uh, this very field in Florence. 39 to go. They run the reverse for Rump. And David Carlson nails him at the 39. Now the timeouts. Two left for the Bearcats, and they'll use their first here with 2.28 to go. All that stands between Ken Sparks and the title. Ken Sparks knows that he doesn't want that ball back in those green shirts' offense's hands. So they, he knew he had to have a first down, and he actually needs another first down to wrap this up completely. Play clock's only at seven. Game clock, two minutes. He'll sneak. Now the last timeout, unless they got a fumble down there. Bearcats indicating they got a fumble, and they don't. If it changed hands, it was after Guyton had been ruled down, and now they'll get the timeout called at 144. And that is the last time Northwest Missouri State can stop the clock. A fumble now, their only hope. Now all Carson Newman's got to do, really, is avoid a disaster on a snap or a handoff if they decide to hand it off. They do here. Wes Simmons made the big hit on uh, Melvin Oates. Clock rolling, 133 and counting. 130 to go. No timeouts for the Bearcats. And if Carson Newman can finish this job, and it appears that they will, it's got to be a wonderful feeling for these men of excellence. Coach Ken Sparks in his first team meeting last January said, our goal is not to win the national championship. Our goal is beyond that. We want to continue and be the right kind of human beings and the national championship will be a byproduct. They need to get this third down though to really finish it. Breaking a tackle, Oates, and then crunched at the 24 yard line, short of the mark by Frank Taylor, and the clock stops at 57 seconds. Huge mistake by Oates. Just as soon as we got through pontificating about the principles of this program, a football mistake by Oates, who's had a great day and is a great player. You don't allow yourself under any circumstances to go out of bounds. The other team is out of timeouts. The only way that Northwest Missouri State can get back in this game is for that clock to get stopped that way and then to have a fumble here. Stranger things have happened. Fourth and two. And another strange thing has happened. Guyton reacting. 
as if he knows how this one's going to be called. But then on the other side, the Bearcats are applauding too. So all of Guyton's uh, body Start language. Ball start on the offense, five yards, still fourth down. Whistling in the graveyard. They'll back up and have fourth and seven. They yeah. have kept Northwest Missouri's hopes alive. Here's what happened. Oates goes out of bounds. Ramage moves early. The right tackle, number 75. And what they've done is they've given, however distant, at least some kind of chance for the Bearcats to get back in this game, believe it or not. Their 12th penalty. Got to wait and see how far Oliver drives the pile. And oh, he even, didn't make it. Even he can't come close nope. this time, and they're not out of it yet. It's amazing. Ken should Sparks. have been over. Ken Sparks knows this should never have happened. Northwest Missouri State should never have come back on the field with their offense, and they got plenty of time to go down and score. Oliver, on a day in which he has rushed for 179 yards, can't get the clinching first down. And so, 74 yards away, Travis Miles takes over with no timeouts, but as you said, a, a long stretch a time on that clock to use, 51 seconds. Nobody's going home, that's for sure. On first down, Miles Chase gets away, pulls up, throws it away. Now that twirled out was Steve Josu. And late getting up, maybe after a late hit, but there's no flag. Well, there were two opportunities for flags there. They could have called him for grounding. I've seen that call in a situation like that. And they could have possibly called a late hit, although I did not see it. Well, let's see if we see it here. Ken Sparks is not happy with Jesu, number 91. He was uh, having some uh, advice for him there. It might have been on that very subject. We'll have to see. That could well have been a late hit. Well, Jesu's the one that falls off from behind there. The hit was actually, yeah, that's Ike Curry. Uh, certainly he wasn't intending to hit him late. The ball had just been thrown, but you're right, it was close. So Travis Miles, with 44 seconds to go, three touchdowns, three interceptions, his backup is a redshirt freshman, John McMenamin, who has played in only seven of their 14 games before today. And has thrown only 17 passes. Good athlete, two-sport all-state pick out of uh, Elkhorn, Nebraska, football and basketball. This would be their fourth come-from-behind win in the postseason. Every round so far, they've had to come from behind. They're used to being in tough positions, although not this tough. And the rule says, and we all certainly hope that Travis Miles is just fine, that this is a minor injury, but even if he's okay, he cannot stay in the game this play. He has to come out of the game this play. So we'll see John McMenamin. And I, I must say that I happen to notice McMenamin in the warm-ups. And he has a superb delivery. He's a big guy. He throws the ball well. He's six foot three, but he is a red shirt freshman. And I don't think you should expect too, too much of him. Final word or two of instruction before they send him out there. Gosh, don't tell him too much, coach. 44 seconds. Red shirt freshman John McMenamin for at least this play, and it's second and ten from their 26. Yeah, and he's got four seconds. That clock at one, they run out of time, and only now do you hear whistles. No flags. Well, finally they throw the flag. Well, you can just tell as that play developed, there's no way they were going to get the snap off in time. No, and that was not John's fault. He was sent on the field with 14 seconds and the clock ticking. He was kept on the sidelines entirely too long. Coaches trying to make sure he knew what to do, and they just overcoat. That's a good definition of overcoaching. 
Miles right back on the field. All he has to do is stay out one play. <laughs> Maybe the coaches wanted to take that delay. Second Who knows? So 79 yards away. Four wide out, shotgun. And he delivers on target at the 39-yard line. It is caught by Holmes, and it's a first down, and it stops the clock at 39 seconds, a gain of 17. Right now, the offensive line for Northwest Missouri State is unable to handle the stunt. Here comes Jesu. He's clean again, which makes this throw all the more impressive on the part of Travis Miles. Travis Miles has shown a lot of guts and grit in this football game to get his team back into it again and again after making mistakes himself. He really has. He's had a chance to have to respond to just about everything, good and bad. And he's done it every time. Again, toward the sideline, and Holmes makes the catch inbounds. Clock still rolling. Tough First break. Down. Yep, tough break that he couldn't catch that thing and stay in stride. He had to go on the ground. They'll probably um, throw the ball on the ground here. Clock holding at 26 seconds as they get the chains moved, and at 23 seconds, he gets the spike. Yeah, and the coaches are livid because the first down should have stopped the clock. I wouldn't be surprised to see them put some time back up here. They really should. The first down should have stopped that clock, and it did not. It did, but only briefly, not as long as it should have. Well, far too briefly. That's what Mel Churchman and his staff are trying to point out to the officials. And they're discussing it now. The referee is not going to put time back on the clock, so we've got 23 seconds. Five wide outs. Miles hit as he delivers. It is complete, but it's over the middle, and the clock at 17 seconds as Ryan George makes the 15-yard catch. 15, 16 seconds is where they hold it this time to move the chain. And the spike also at 16 seconds. I'm Here's telling the you, they're... They are going to get every last drop out of this championship they won a year ago. No way they should still be out there playing, and yet they're not only playing, they are still threatening to keep this game going in overtime. Just remember how this happened. Oates ran out of bounds. He was not knocked out of bounds. He ran out of bounds to stop the clock, ramage the tackle, moved early, preventing their ability to make the first down, and that's how this offense got back on the field. It should have never been out there. From the 34, Miles going deep up the right side. He has a man, and he'll make a touchdown. Unbelievable. <laughs> and 10 seconds to spare, 34 yards. Miles to Hill, and now the two-point conversion, which will come after Carson Newman talks over. Their strategy shouldn't even be playing still, and they are still very much alive as they try to repeat their championship. Dave, 20 years from now, you'll find 100,000 people that will swear they were at this game. Oh, yeah, I was there. One of the great Division II football games. Let me change that. One of the great football games I've ever seen in my 44 years of football. Even Mel's just, nah, he's not going to get excited. He knows that two-pointer is a long way. Three yards is a long way when you're trying to make the two points. Coach Sparks has got his unit over there, his defensive unit, and he's reminding them. All you got to do is play the defense, and you keep them out of the end zone. They got us rattled. They got down there and got the touchdown. Keep them out right here, and the game is ours. With 3.51 to go, Carson Newman put up their last score, and at that point it was 44-29. Since then, a six-play, 75-yard drive at 53 seconds. Now a six-play, 74-yard drive, taking 41 seconds. They still need the two-point conversion to force overtime. 
Ryan George goes out wide right. Two tight ends. And Miles throwing the fake for George. Caught it! He got it! We're tied! David, I was totally baffled when I saw the formation and saw they were in two tight ends with one wide receiver. I thought, gee, are they going to run a power or an option here? And the wide receiver was not Tony Miles, but Ryan George was the man for the job, as it turned out. A remarkable throw and catch. Great programs have specialists for every purpose. I assure you that Travis Miles and George have worked on this thing over and over and over. Churchma with his typical exuberant emotional re actually he does get a little emotional here he actually left the ground that was about a two inch vertical jump he doesn't get emotional now they need to take him straight to the <laughs> er 15 point comeback in the last three minutes and 51 seconds the eagles leave the door open they step right through and they still had to take with no timeouts, the ball 74 yards and complete the two-point conversion. And Travis Miles pulled off both improbable acts. And now 10 seconds to go in regulation. That group over there never gave up hope, even when they were down 15. Well, I've been telling people all week that we were excited as a crew, our ESPN crew, to be here and watch this community and these two fine programs come together. But I don't think we ever expected it to be quite this good. Burnell rolls that one. Mays leaves five seconds on the clock. Ronnie A. Main sets it up 25-yard line. If they can throw it 75 yards, then they will have the final in a series of uh, minor miracles. But they really, do that, we Dave. really turn our thoughts now to overtime. They and are this, not going to do been, that. I've, I'm counting 15 different momentum swings in this game. At least. And you know, gonna, you know who has it going into the extra period. We will head to overtime in the Division II National Championship, tied at 44. 30 points scored in the fourth quarter alone that ties the NCAA Division II Championship game record. We are far from done. for the overtime and about four minutes ago it didn't look like Northwest Missouri State had a prayer. They were down 44-29 and leading into the overtime period, Mel Churchma's team has all the momentum and Ken Sparks' team just had a pre-overtime prayer. The pre-game prayer apparently having worn off <laughs> in that Bearcat comeback. Now in the overtime they have the coin toss and you choose offense, defense, or into the field and there's really no wind whatsoever to make that much of a factor each team one possession from the opponent's 25 until the winner is decided no game clock after the second overtime you must go for two if you get a touchdown but when ken had him in that huddle there before he said the prayer i do not think he was quoting scripture with them but he was in their face and he as a football coach was getting his people ready and then sure enough, they did have a prayer. They pray before and after practice. They are staunch in their belief, and uh, they're Still sincere in it. So far. All right. I heard him say tail. I see tail. Defense first, you have your choice to the end of the playoff. A 
So Northwest Missouri State wins the toss as uh, most elect to do. They want defense first so they can see what their offense needs. What is it like down on the field, Don McPherson? Well, I'll tell you, Dave, I've, I've been to the big house. I've been to Happy Valley, but nothing can match the noise down here on the field and the emotion of these two ball clubs. As this fourth quarter has ebbed and flowed, both stands have just gone dead silent and complete rage. And right now they're both in rage, ready for this overtime. You just never gonna see a better game. That's all there is to it. 381 rushing yards for Carson Newman, and yet not enough to win in regulation. 179 from Oliver and a touchdown. 30 points in the fourth quarter. A championship game record. And Miles brought him back time after time. 240 yards he has thrown for since halftime. Now they had less than 60 total yards at the half. So now Guyton and Carson Newman on the first possession of overtime and in and out of the hands of Quez Rump. If you're Ken Sparks, how in the world do you get your team reignited? How do you get him to forget about blowing a 15-point lead in the last four minutes? Well, I think you do just what he did. He got up in their face with enthusiasm, urging them to go back, play the football game, put the game, put the past out of their minds. It's a brand-new football game. Nice play call, but a drop ball by Ruff on the first play from scrimmage. To the option, Refor, who left earlier briefly with the turned ankle. And this turns into a gain of about four. Greg Bonnet made the tackle, third and six coming. Northwest Missouri State has a, I think, monumental edge in the kicking game. In the persons of their kicker, in the person of their kicker, Purnell, assuming that the injury to him on the extra point was not bad. Ryan Fleming, on the other hand, only had three for eight field goals coming into this game. Made one today, made his career best today, but Purnell is a big leaguer. If it should come to the kicking game. Four wides. Oliver is the setback and complete and struggling for first down yardage and getting there was Quez Rump, so he makes up for his first down drop. And right there in Quez Rump, you see all the ingredients of what's gone into this game. Courage, running into the middle, catching the ball, concentration, skill, hand-eye coordination, and flat-out determination. And the beat goes on. Guyton, pitch, fumbled, and still out there, recovered by Northwest Missouri State. The last six years, Carson Newman has lost to the eventual national champion. Ryan Miller falls on that ball, and with the kicking game that we just talked about, the advantage, the huge advantage, now swings to Northwest Missouri State. Fumbles have cost Carson Newman each of the last two championship opportunities, and now they stare at the specter of that happening again. That's their only loss fumble today. It might be the only chance they get to lose a fumble. A lot of times, rematches are disappointments. They don't live up to the original. This one has far surpassed last year. Bearcats take over. They start with the give up the middle to David Jansen for a yard, maybe two. I would expect they'll be conservative here, but they can't be so conservative that they put too much pressure. Now, the kicker is perfectly capable of kicking. Purnell is perfectly capable of kicking the thing from here, which would be a 41-yarder. Yeah, his longest is here, 48. He's already in field goal. Yeah, range. and that thing went through the top of the uprights. I saw it on film. Dancing. With the sweep and inside the 20, it'll be third and three or four. Bearcats won this matchup 
on this very field a year ago, 24-6, in miserable rainy conditions. We've got perfect conditions, and the uh, two teams matching the perfect conditions with a memorable 44-44 regulation. 34th quarter points needed by the Bearcats to get this far, and they're looking at third and five and maybe looking to just position the ball in the middle of the field this time. Jansen, not quite to the middle, but he gets inside that hash mark, and now here comes, for David Purnell, a chance for Northwest Missouri State to repeat a national championship. And we joked about the possibility that they would tape an aspirin on his ankle, but I don't think that ankle's bothering him at all right now. He's not limping. Adrenaline does an awful lot in a situation like this. He is an outstanding kicker. And if he's well protected and if the mechanics go well with the snap in the hole, he ought to make this thing. Jeff LeBlanc, the holder, T.J. Sheklock, the snapper. It is up and no good. No good. And like I said, the beat goes on. It doesn't matter how great the kicker is. He's still got to make it under pressure. Fans wearing green and white had already raced onto the field. But he hooked it, and we're still going in Florence. The loneliest man in the state of Alabama, David Purnell, who hooked the 36-yard championship-winning kick now the second overtime begins and a flag at the end of the option pitch which Jansen took for a couple of yards holding offense as Purnell lined that one up As we look at Hill, call for the hold right there. As Purnell lined that one up, everybody on his sideline expected only the best. And they were, they were already out on the field to celebrate. One problem, kick was wide left. I have seen that happen to the greatest kickers in the history of the National Football League under pressure. Purnell is a superb kicker. One would expect him to make that. But since he didn't, now he's got to put it out of his mind, and right now he's got to hope, along with the rest of his team, they can overcome this huge holding penalty on J.R. Hill. Uh, Gary Anderson, Minnesota Vikings, doesn't miss it. Kick all last year until the one to clinch the NFC title game. It does happen to every one of them. In and out of the hands of Tony Miles. Perfectly timed to hit that time by Charlie Walker. He's made a couple of big plays. Two of the biggest plays in the game have been made by Charlie in the area that is most difficult for a defensive back. Defensive backs have to change directions, arrive at the point with the football at exactly the right instant, and they have to make decisions in a millisecond. Good job by Charlie again. And the clear advantage because of the holding call now rests with Carson Newman. Back and forth the momentum ebbs and flows. Way too many swings to count now. Second and 20, Miles incomplete. Oh, he just missed that one. He had plenty of time. Went for J.R. Hill. Yeah, one of the heroes of the comeback. Good job for protecting that offensive line just fine. And he just short-armed it. Let the elbow drop down, in which case the ball tends to fly, and it took off on him. Coaches are over there screaming, trying to get a timeout called. Good decision. Unlike at the end of regulation, it's Churchma who has to pump his team back up after the letdown of the missed field goal, the not missed only, opportunity. Yeah, not only his team, he's got to get Purnell. Somebody's got to be with Purnell right now saying, look, shake it off, shake it off, man. You're going to have to go back out there and win this game for us, and you will do it. That's what you do at a time like this. 
DBA bowling coming up next. Well, nobody's with him. They're just leaving him to his own thoughts and his own warm-up routine. Well, I don't think that's good. Somebody needs to be talking to him. Easily one of the best kickers in Division II. Really some of the best numbers uh, in any level of college football this year. He was 18 out of 25 on the season. Didn't miss a PAT. Still hasn't all season long. Exuberant, positive attitude. His teammates love him. All kind of good things. <laughs> he still didn't make that kick, David. I remember Jan Stenerud, the Kansas City Chiefs, and he went on to become, at his in his era, the greatest kicker of all time. He missed a big one in the overtime, or it led to overtime against the Dolphins. Third and 20, Hill in motion. Caught by Seneca Holmes. Inside the 30. And they're coming on the field once again will be Purnell. This is going to be a much longer kick. This will be right at about 45 yards. 45 and from a tough angle for a right-footed kicker. The right-footed kicker tends to hook the ball to the left more so from this hash for some reason. A little bit more difficult, but again, well within his range. 70% between 40 and 49 is you. Very makeable kick for Purnell, but it's blocked. Never got that one off the ground. It's an awful lot to ask of a young man. He simply couldn't get it back together after the first one. He kicked that one low into the line. He very wisely fell on the ball. Now, if, if Carson Newman picks that up and runs for a touchdown, the game is over. So he stayed in the game enough to go get on the football, but he did not get it up in his normal fashion. He didn't hit the ball well. Chris Butler comes in with the block to add to his day, which already included two interceptions. So now, Leonard Guyton and the Carson Newman offense needed a score to win their first Division II championship. And they start with a plunge up the middle by Oliver. After all that offense in the fourth quarter, 30 points by Northwest Missouri State alone. Nobody scored in the second overtime. Now oh, there's some smashing going on down there. Wes Simmons made a big hit there. And you, when you hit that guy, Oliver, uh, you're the one that reverberates. You can tell Wes had a bad shoulder, but he's staying in this football game. Second and eight. Guiding for Oliver. Down to the 17, where it will be third and two. Yeah, and now the focus shifts to Ryan Fleming, number 18, the place kicker for Carson Newman, who had his career long today. I think it was a 38-yarder. He has not had a lot of success with long field goals, but he's down in a situation where if they don't make this first, he'll probably get a chance to win the game. It was his season longest, his career best, 43. They'd like to get him quite a bit closer. Oliver is going to be real close. Lean backward, did everything he could to stretch to the 15. Let's see if we got there. I don't think they're going to give him the 15. Brian Schertz, number 90, in there scrapping and fighting, keeping his pads down, making a hit on the fine running back. And this is a tough decision here, forcing this short. You'd really love to go make the first down. But it's right in the middle of the field. It's a 20, it's a 32-yarder, and they're going to get Fleming out there. Fleming ought to make this. College kicker is capable of this, but there's so, so much pressure on these youngsters. Only three of eight coming in. He hit his only kick earlier from 38. For the championship, 32 yards. And he hooked it. How much more is this can they take? We are still scoreless as we head to triple overtime. Purnell hooked a chance to win, and Fleming matches him. 
Well, about four hours ago, this Division II championship uh, began under bright, warm, sunny conditions. Doug Sparks' mood isn't exactly sunny right now after missing that uh, potential game winner by Fleming. And on the other side, Churchman knows the feeling. So we head to triple overtime. It begins with Guyton keeping for three. Each team wasting a chance with a very makeable field goal. Brunell in the first overtime after an Oliver fumble. Left Carson Newman scoreless. Eagles unable to take advantage of their chance. And so they have it first here in the third extra period. Hey, Dave, maybe we ought to order in dinner here. We could be here for a while. Guyton, the other way. Fake that pitch, kept it to the 16, where it will be third and one, maybe a little less than one. First overtime in a Division II championship. People here will not soon forget what it took for the Bearcats to get here. 44-29 with under four minutes in regulation. They trail. Runs through the middle, good for the first down by Oliver. They got a touchdown and two-point conversion in the final 10 seconds of regulation when all Carson Newman had to do with 57 seconds to go, run out the clock. They ran out of bounds instead. They had a procedure penalty turn a fourth and two into a fourth and seven. Northwest Missouri State drove 74 yards to force the overtime, and we're stuck on 44. Guyton for Rumpf and incomplete. Oh, he had it too. Rump had very loose coverage from Carlson. Carlson was too far off Rump. It was an easy walk-in touchdown. If the connection had been there, Guyton simply missed him. Take a look. You'll see Rump running clean. The ball, well, actually it was tipped. Yep, great play by Brian Williams, who's been all over this field. Unofficially, we got him for 10 tackles plus, but he hadn't done anything as important as tipping that ball. That would have been a touchdown. I'm not sure I wouldn't try that again. Up against the play clock, get it off in time. Guyton looking to the air. It is run to the one. Yeah, this time the coverage was, was actually pretty good. Marcel Swift was in coverage. It was just a well-executed throw and catch. Rump came back to the ball, and the ball was thrown on the money. And Rump pops up limping. Leading receiver for Carson Newman will have to come off at least for a play. And they go two tight ends and Garbani Jackson, the wide out on the left side. Guyton tries to sneak it in and can't. Bearcats trying to indicate a fumble at the bottom of that pile, but Carson Newman ball second and goal. We're in the Division II National Championship third overtime period. At Brawley Municipal Stadium in Florence, Alabama, Dave Barnett, Phil Curry, and Don McPherson. Carson Newman led this, had it all but one, a 44-29 with 3.51 to go in the fourth quarter. Northwest Missouri State scored 30 points in the fourth quarter to tie it at 44, scoreless in the first two overtime periods. Here comes second and goal for Carson Newman. They indicate touchdown, but the officials don't. I tell you, there's some knock-down, drag-out, rock'em, sock'em football going down, going on down there in the pit. If you've never been a lineman on offense or defense, you really don't understand how that feels. You got to bend those exhausted knees and get those quads and those big muscles working and your pads down. This is gut check time. Third and goal from the one again. 
Antoine Oliver, still no indication. Now there it is. Touchdown. Our first points of overtime. Fitting that it would come from Antoine Oliver. 194 yards today. Two touchdowns. He is all man. He just got those pads down behind his big guys, Nick Brown and Henry Lee, and they just wallowed into that end zone. And they're required to go for two here. After the second overtime, you have to go for two. Guyton backs up. Throw on the run is going to be over everybody. But a marker down in the end zone. And it is against Northwest Missouri State. And here's a very interesting statistic. When you're on the three-yard line going for two, you've got a 33% probability of Holding making it. by the defense on an eligible receiver at the distance, first down. Okay, if you move the ball a yard and a half, Dave, with a penalty like this, your odds go up to 67%. So you double your chances of making it if you can get the penalty down to the one and a half yard line. So the odds are very much in Carson Newman's favor of getting this two point conversion. Oliver, that touchdown from the one. What do they do from the two? Guyton, and on the second effort, he gets in. I thought he was stopped at the line. Right, and you think about it. If he had been on the three, that is not a two point conversion. So from the one and a half, things change drastically. So in the third overtime, Carson Newman breaks out with the Oliver touchdown from a yard out and the Guyton determination. The only thing that got him that two-point conversion. First, the touchdown by Antoine Oliver. Ben Sparks finally on the board in the extra period. Work yet to be done, though. Now, Northwest Missouri State needing a touchdown and a two-point conversion just to stay alive, and they start with Tucker Woolsey up the middle for nothing. Yeah, I think that was a good call. That was a big play for them in their first drive in the first quarter. They were getting their big fullback untracked up the pipe. This time they ran into the teeth of a blitzing defense into the A-gap and um, end up second and ten. They'll be spreading it out, throwing it here. I guarantee you. Five wideouts. Monica Holmes, the motion man. Four wideouts right side. They throw it underneath. Bubble screen for Tony Miles. Bridge back to the 15-yard line, and he's close for the first down. That close. Nice job of blocking by the people out front. He motioned to what is essentially a quad or four wide receivers to one side of the field. He's got three blockers in what is essentially a toss sweep, Dave. It's a bubble screen, but with three blockers out in front. The traditional one that we see a lot from people like Purdue and Florida has two blockers. This is a little different, and maybe a little better, but a first down, too. Keep your eye on Miles right there. Miles got it on the reverse. Inside the five breaks, a tackle, score! Travis Miles with terrific, Travis Miles with terrific ball handling. Chasing David Jansen. Tony Miles already had it and was clear around left end. And the reason that corner was so well established for Miles is number 82, Mark Moss, doing a good job of blocking. Oh, man, good job. 82, Moss got his man on the ground, Chris Butler. And if you don't block Chris Butler, he's already shown he knows what to do. Now, can they get the two-point conversion? Miles having a roll back left. Look. Into the end zone, they got it. They got it. Steve Comer. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. 
You can go ahead and send out the order for dinner, Dave. <laughs> We're going to be here for a while. It's just not ever going to end, evidently. I'm not sure I ever wanted to. Nobody's dead in this thing. Four hours plus. We go to quadruple overtime. Boy, how much more can they take on that uh, Ken Sparks sideline? It has been won and lost and won and lost and tied repeatedly over the last four plus hours. And it is still not done. We go to our fourth overtime. Don McPherson. Well, Dave, as you can imagine, the emotions here are running high and low. It's starting to turn into frustration. Both teams are getting very frustrated with their inability to score. Bearcats start the fourth overtime with David Jansen picking up eight yards. And Ike Curry, the defender, a little bit slow getting up. You know, Tony Miles has now scored three different ways, Bill. 81-yard kickoff return, six catches, 62 yards, and a touchdown. And on that reverse, he's now got himself a rushing touchdown. Well, he's going to have to intercept one. He can't do that unless they put him in on defense. The only other way I know it. Is. I would. I'd get him out there. Jansen. First down to the 13. Tony Miles, a junior out of Mark, Texas. Far and away their leading receiver, but he has also shown that is far and away not the only thing that he does to be a weapon. Touchdown receiving, 48 rushing, rushing yards and a touchdown, and then, of course, the kickoff return. And on a short kick, and those are hard to do. The reason you kick the ball short like that is so that a great returner doesn't get on track and run it in the end zone. He comes out wide left on first and 10 from the 13. Ray Fake and a roll by Travis Miles. Gun into the end zone where J.R. Hill has it in the corner. That's the combination that got them through regulation. They got the touchdown with 10 seconds to go. Very sophisticated and polished offense here with a bootleg, not a naked boot, but with a guard pulling to protect. J.R. Hill down the sideline. He beats the free safety, Montre Ford. And they're in for the touchdown. And once again, they're required to go for two here as they were in the previous overtime period. Now, Travis Miles is in a pretty long, involved discussion with Bill Horn, the referee. He may be talking about where he wants the ball placed, and he's going to call a timeout. Coach Churchman is out on the field. Now he's heading on over to talk to the offensive coordinator, Jim Swoboda. So we'll find out what's happening a little later. Well, presuming we're done by 8 Eastern, <laughs> we'll solve the Heisman mystery here on ESPN. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, John Makovic, all together at the Downtown Athletic Club in New York with Ron Dane, Joe Hamilton, Chad Pennington, Drew Brees, and Michael Vick. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, tonight on ESPN. J.R. Hill's last three catches have all been for touchdowns. He joins the list of uh, people that got Northwest Missouri State to this position when all appeared lost. They were the undefeated national champs by beating Carson Newman in this game a year ago. Carson Newman coming into this one undefeated, ranked first. Bearcats hoping for the repeat. In control at the moment as they figure out what they want to do for the two-point conversion. Yeah, whatever that means, in control. These in controls have lasted a matter of seconds that's, here that's in, been in the most, overtime. That's been the most useless phrase of the last four hours. You're not kidding, because the control does go back and forth in a hurry. And now that the Eagles have seen what Northwest Missouri State has in mind, they call timeout. That's exactly what happened. They waited for Northwest Missouri State to line up with the formation that they were going to use for their two-point play, 
and then they call timeout to plan what they're going to do. So now, Northwest Missouri State, continuing the mind game, will probably change its strategy. Those numbers for Travis Miles, keep in mind, at the half, he was 6 of 14 for 29 yards. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the best performances under any circumstances you'll ever see in college football, regardless of championship circumstances. That's right. They've come back with incredible courage and execution. You can't just be courageous. You've got to be able to execute the throws and catches, the blocks, runs, and tackles to get back in the game. And then once they took it over and seemed to have it, Carson Newman came back with the same kind of courage and commitment. And there's an old thing in football that coaches love to talk about, and it's called refuse to lose. you got two teams here that are literally refusing to lose. Last minute substituting for Carson Newman, Cedric Killings. The All-America defensive tackle racing back onto the field. They really want him out there. And they're set to go out of the eye for the two points. Coming after him. And sacked back at the 20-yard line. He never seemed to know that Michael Breadwood was bearing down on him. He was so intent at looking into the end zone for a target, I don't know that he ever saw Breadwood until it was too late. Well, I think he knew he was coming. He was clean because there's nobody to pick up the corner. The quarterback has to account for the corner blitz. It either has to be a hot throw or he has to evade him and do something. What Miles normally does so extremely well, he simply did not get done here. And he's made that, no attempt to, uh, to be uh, evasive at all. That no, was what was strange. And he's so good at it. It looked like he just sort of froze at the switch. And just pure fatigue is setting in here for these young men. Believe me, it's a lot of football. Carson Newman's turn. <laughs> and Oates for three off left tackle. Now, you and I don't care who wins this football game here, Dave, but I want to get this very clear in our viewers' minds. There aren't any losers on this field. Regardless of how this game comes out, everybody wins in a game like this. You'd love for your team to have the most points, but these kids have laid it on the line the way you're supposed to. Again through the middle. And turn back this time is Oates. By the linebacker, Greg Bonnet. Yeah, and we've got Greg for 13 tackles. We hadn't said much about Greg, but he's been quietly very active all over this field. Fine inside linebacker, the buck linebacker that lines up on the weak side for the most part from Monroe, Iowa. And they're still sticking down there no matter how tired they are. One can only imagine how tired they've got to be. Third and five in the fourth overtime. Guyton, play fake. Hangs one up for rough and incomplete in the end zone. Last time he was out there, he had to limp off. He may again have to limp off. Tony Warren, number 25, fine red shirt corner, red shirt freshman corner, has come in this game and done a lot of good things. He's been active in coverage. He was right there for that one. And here we are at what we would call yet another moment of truth. Rump indeed limping, but not off the field. Out to his spot wide right. Last gasp if they don't make it for Carson Newman. Fourth and five. Oates, first down to the 12. Good gracious alive, what a call. I love it. That's not what I would have called, but I would have been wrong. Look at here. Is, is there anybody else in America in that situation who calls running play fourth and five? I don't they know think what they're so. doing. They know that they know Clay Clevenger and Brett Mistak over there on the left side of the offensive line are going to get their job done, and they're still in this football game. Oates now over 100 yards. Oliver drops it. Ball is loose at the 12-yard line. Recovered by Northwest Missouri State, and they win it.
The Bearcats have done it back to back. And in a game that featured 110 points, a defensive play decides it. And perhaps not surprisingly, the bane of Carson Newman's offense existence, even though they piled up all the records this year, nonetheless, they have had problems hanging on to the football. 38 fumbles coming into this game with 21 lost, and it was the fumble that made the difference in the end. But I want to repeat that there is not a loser on either one of these teams. Both of them played their hearts out. It was a great football game. In the midst of all the madness down there somewhere, Don McPherson. Dave, and with Coach Mel Churchman, Coach, how do you feel right now? Well, I just elated. I said we just we won a national championship. It's such a great game, and uh, I said it was going to be a great game all week, and I didn't dream it'd be like this, but our kids have been doing this all year, and it's one more time. With little more than a minute to go, you're out of the ball game. All they have to do to squash it. How does it feel when you got that opportunity? Well, you just, you just, you just respect your coaches and your kids. Our, our, our coaches did such a great job of keeping us in it, and our kids did a great job of getting it done. They never died. They, ne they believed they were going to win the whole time. You said it yesterday that you don't have a, a definitive leader. Your whole team are a bunch of leaders. How does it feel for these young men this uh, year? It's great for our seniors. It's just, uh, Lord bless them, man. I tell you, there are 15 great kids, and it's just wonderful. Thanks very much, coaching. Thank Congratulations. You, Appreciate right. it. I want to get they ought to rename this game the Yogi Bowl because this was never over until it was over. Travis Miles bringing his team back from 44-29 down with 3.51 to go in regulation. Over and over and over again, he brought him back. When it looked like Carson Newman had wrapped up its first Division II championship, their hopes ending on this fumble. And the day the fumble occurred because of extra effort, not because of a lack of effort, but because Antoine Oliver is scratching and driving for yardage. Ryan Miller comes up with it. The pain, Guyton is not accustomed to losing. Sparks and his offensive coordinator, Mike Turner, praying that the thing can't be and you wonder why coaches don't live very long <laughs> as a rule. And Churchman's life just extended by about two decades. That's how much of your heart and soul you put into these things. Ryan Miller recovers the fumble to clinch a repeat title for Northwest Missouri State. And for the seventh time in the last eight years, Carson Newman's season ends on this field. 58-52, our final. For Bill Curry and Don McPherson, Dave Barnett, so long from Florence, Alabama, this has been a presentation of ESPN.